Hello and welcome to the Real World Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications. Today we are talking all about Pixar films. We are going to rank every single Pixar movie, all 26 of their films, including Lightyear. Let's go to infinity and beyond. All right, so thank you for joining us again on the Real World Podcast, talking all about the Pixar movies today. I'm joined by a very special guest. My brother Carson is here. How you doing? Hey, doing well. Glad to be here. I've seen pretty much every episode of this podcast. That's great. I'm really so, glad you're supporting the channel. Yeah, I mean, I have no choice because <laughs> I'm related to you, but yes. it's great. I, I'm, I've enjoyed the show so much. Good. I've never I've never talked to Bert, but yeah, he's you need great. To get on I love with Bert. I love what he has to say. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, he's um, great. He's almost my polar opposite. He is. You so. have a lot of a lot of differing <laughs> opinions, which is going to make this podcast very unique. Yes, from yes. our previous episode. Hopefully, we don't agree on too much, the two of us, because podcasts yeah. like that are kind of obnoxious when yeah. they repeat the same things. But That's true. We look similar, um, but we do have different opinions on some things. We're we're basically clones, but right. cl- there's always an evil clone. That's true. So. That's true. He is my evil clone. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this should be fun. Now we're going to jump into the ranking of all the Pixar movies. So we're going to rank all 26 Pixar films right now. Are you ready for this? Amazing that there's already 26 Pixar movies. It's crazy. I mean, they've only been around since 1995. Which is young for a film studio. Very young. Especially an animation studio. Very young. And they just hit them all out of the park. Again, critically acclaimed, all box office hits. So it, it's it's a really difficult ranking, especially because it's not like ranking a franchise where it's like all these movies are similar. Right, right. Like we just did the Jurassic ranking and that was fairly easy for me because mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. some that I really don't like, some that I like more. And we did not get to rewatch every Pixar film, but we've seen them all at least twice, I think. I think I've seen... I think Turning Red is the only one I've seen once in Lightyear. I think I've seen Turning Red twice. Have you? Okay. The only one, the thing I think I've seen the least is Turning Red. Yeah. So probably twice. Yeah, you're right. Well, the thing you've seen least is Lightyear now. Oh, well, yeah. I've only seen Lightyear yes. once. We're ranking Lightyear too. Okay. okay. You're going to include I don't Lightyear. think I put Lightyear in my list. I'll you need to put it in there. Put it. You want me to start us off? Sure. We All going? right. So we're going lowest, right? We're starting at the bottom. Okay. Starting at the bottom. My number 26, my least favorite Pixar film, is Cars 2. This movie just, it falls flat for many reasons. I think they wanted to sell more toys. They understood that people loved Mater and he was super funny. All the kids laughed at all his jokes and they're like, let's just make a movie about him. That'll like make a lot of money. Too. Mater's jokes in the first Cars movie are underrated. They're good. He's, he's they're a good. He's really, funny. he has terrific he's, comedic timing. He's the perfect foil for Lightning McQueen. He's the opposite of Lightning in every way. Mm-hmm. And he's super funny. Their friendship, he, they, to me, their friendship is on par with Woody and Buzz. Woody and Buzz, Sully and Mike, they're all right up there. This movie, what it does wrong is it relies so much on Mater. And Lightning McQueen is in like, and it feels like he's in like five minutes of the movie. And then he's out. I mean, it feels like he's in a scene. He's out. He's okay. in a scene. He's out. He's I mean, in like, yeah. And then the whole story is Mater getting caught up in this spy adventure with, and I've got to admit, my favorite part of the film. Finn McMissile. Finn McMissile. Played by the great Michael Caine. I mean, it is, it is, he, he's playing <laughs> Bond, right? I mean, it's, if Michael Caine was Bond. I think, if I'm being honest with you, I think other than Children of Men, this is my favorite <laughs> Michael Caine performance. Really? I think it is. Above Batman Begins, above, Dark Knight. Above Alfred, yeah. Wow. Okay. Above Alfred, above okay. Prestige. Above the Prestige. Above the Prestige. Wow. He smashes birds. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's, what's the lady's name? Sally? No, Sally's McQueen's Sally's lady. McQueen's lady. This lady's this Holly, is... I think. I don't remember. I don't really remember much about this movie. I think I've seen it miss, the least. I just miss something. But the movie to me is Mater's Dream. And it is made. It's one of the, it's one Larry of the, the cable, Larry the Cable Guy has actually said this on the red carpet, right? Of Cars mm-hmm. 3. Yeah. They're like, so what'd you think about Cars 2? And he's like, I think it was all just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, what? That makes perfect sense, though. It does make perfect sense. It was all just a dream made her at. It's again, it is like those Cars tunes. It's a Cars tune, which is a terrific title for a series of Cars shorts. I love it. Cars so tunes. Smart. So punny. I love Cars, man. Cars is so fun. Yeah. Um, This is also my 26, by the way. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we ranked them the same place. Gotcha. I really like the spy adventure. 
I think that actually it is as fun. A, That's as a thing. spy adva- like as a spy action film, I right. think it really works. It has a really interesting idea of if you're gonna make a spy movie and incorporate it with a race, right. of, and you're not gonna make right. a speed racer, right? You have to do this really interesting plot of cars get to a certain point and then they mm. explode. They yeah. get fast to a certain speed, yeah, it's right? Like, it's like the movie Speed. Except it's, it's like if you, go, speed. if you go under 50, this is if you go over. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so it's it's a really cool plot that revolves around this final big world tour race. Right, right. And Mater being this fish out of water and everywhere that he is. Yes. Um, it's funny. And there, there are a lot of really great gags that are done in this movie. The only problem is there are too many of them. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's... Again, Pixar hasn't made a bad movie yet. This is the worst one. I still gave it two and a half stars. I didn't give it a negative review. I gave it a mixed review because the action sequences are actually really cool. They're fun to watch. There's there's an action sequence in a bathroom, which don't ask me how cars operate bathrooms, but there's an action sequence in a bathroom and Finn McMissile, I think, goes in and he's in there and then this other blue car is in there right and they pull out guns yeah cars have guns on the side like on the hubcaps of their cars super cool that is an awesome idea yeah and their cars are flying around they have all these like it's finn missile is a bond car he's like the aston martin he like has all these gadgets yeah he's got all these cool things so yeah cars too fun movie just it actually it it literally ends great like a cars tune ends right it ends with them at Radiator Springs yeah. and Mater's telling the story to people. Right. It's the template. And they're like, no way, Mater. Right. And then yeah. they show up yeah. at the end and it's like, oh, it's, it's exactly, is it actually real? It's the template they use for all the Cars tunes. It is. It is. And it's, that makes it to me a Cars tune. It's and the longest Cars tune. Exactly. It's a it's feature cars, length version. Hey, it's Cars tune. Yeah. What? No way. Exactly. Can't believe so, it. Anyways, that's our 26. Moving right along to number 25. I have Finding Dory at 25. I really, I really hope our lists aren't exactly the same because mine's also <laughs> Our list might be close to the same. Finding Dory, it's an, the only other one I gave two and a half stars. Mixed review. Because okay. it's fittingly forgettable. Um, <laughs> this movie. Film about am, an, I, a person with amnesia. Right, exactly. I just don't remember much about it. I remember her parents. And she gets lost in an aquarium with a septopus, septopus. named Hank. You remember septopus? I remember Hank because he's my favorite character Hank in the is, film. Hank is really cool. And Marlon and Nemo are in it? Yeah. They're, they're like the, the B-plot. They're looking for Dory. Yeah. Right. They're finding Dory. So it's, yeah. Yeah. And and it's just, I don't remember that much about it. I don't remember it being that emotional. I don't remember it I disagree. being that exciting. You're wrong. It's, it's very emotional. Do you not remember okay. baby Dory? Baby Dory, kind of. Yeah, she got the super When's big last eyes. Time this movie? When it came out, I, you, you know, I don't know. I've you maybe it seen it twice or two or three times. Baby Dory, she's with her parents. Okay. It's very emotional. Okay. She gets lost. Yeah. She can't remember where she is. Right. And then she like lives her whole life not knowing who her family is. It's too bad. But she found a new family. <laughs> Why did she meet her parents? What? She found a new family. That was what the whole first movie was about. No, it's not about that. It kind of is. is. It's about Nemo and Mark. It Mom. kind of is, but she she plays a big role in that first film, teaching Marlon to let go. Okay, okay. We'll, and, get, we'll get to Nemo. And, we'll get to Nemo. We'll but, get to Nemo. But, I'm also, but what I'm saying is <laughs> she finds a home. She has no one. Sure. She's looking around for for a friend and she finally at the end of that movie becomes a part of their family sure okay and so you just this movie felt wholly unnecessary yeah okay. so un, i mean again just above cars 2 as far as how unnecessary this movie feels like it literally feels like they were like okay we need <laughs> a guaranteed money maker mm, mm. we need an incredibles too exactly is what we need exactly yeah so i just i don't i don't care for it um i'm sorry you don't care for it yeah I care for it. Okay. But it's so low on my list. Gotcha. I okay. love the aquarium. Okay. I remember that. It's being so fun. beautiful. Like I said, the octopus, septopus. The whole movie is beautiful to look at. So there's yeah. this thing on Disney Plus called Dory's Reef Cam. I've watched it. Where it's just six hours of right. Dory. Yeah. Swimming around. Dory's Reef Cam. Different fish swimming in. It's wonderful. Yeah. I love, I love watching Nemo just because it's gorgeous. Yeah. And this holds that same kind of visual a- aesthetic right it's very pleasing yes i also like the new characters i like the whales remember the whales vaguely bailey the whale yeah there's and then her tank 
buddy right yeah there's like a beluga and then a yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like a humpback or something or i don't know no, she's she's like a, like a, a t- spotted tiger, tiger shark whale or something, or something. Yeah. um anyways hmm. i don't know anything about marine biology yeah. but yeah. I did really enjoy the movie. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> now we're on to 24. My number 24 is Monsters University. <laughs> I <ain't> also Monsters University. <laughs> okay, so we're yeah. still same on this. That's fitting because these three, I think, represent Pixar cash grabbing, which is what they're worst at. So finding our Monsters University is another example of, okay, people love Monsters, Inc. We need a sure thing to make us some money. So let's just make another Monsters, Inc. And they at least in this one try to give Mike and Sully like some character stuff to do and like interactions that are interesting and the way they meet is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Their relationship, how it develops in this is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So this one, I gave a positive review. I gave it three stars because you got Billy Crystal and you got John Goodman back. Right, right. And they're doing a great job playing more youthful versions of these characters, even though they are older. Mm -hmm. And they just tell a, a good story here. I felt it was a good story story. and I felt it had a good supporting cast. I feel the movie is not very well paced. When I watch it, I'm kind of like, let's get on with it sometimes. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's one of my major hangups with it. Um, Um, But overall, I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I like so much about it because it does what every other Pixar sequel does. And Mm -hmm. it focuses on the secondary character. Right. Who is Mike Wazowski. And I think Mike Wazowski is not necessarily a compelling or interesting character sure in the first monsters inc movie Mm -hmm. i mean i love mike yeah but there's so much of mike in this that's so good i agree his whole his whole arc of wanting to become a monster and wanting to be scary i know i know and how it comes so naturally to sully right and their rivalry yeah you know i really enjoy and the whole idea of just a college set Mm. Pixar movie is a great idea. Mm -hmm. I agree, yeah, you're right. Um, And I love the monster world. I think it's so interesting and and intricate. Uh, Post-apocalyptic Earth. It's so interesting. I really... (laughs) Super Carlin Brothers, shout out! Pixar Theory. Um, I really like uh, monster games. Right, right. That is cool. That is a cool cool sequence. That's probably my favorite sequence in the whole film. Well, that's the whole film. Well, I mean, it's not the whole... It's not literally the whole film, but it's... It's a big part of it's, the final it's, act. It's the adventure. I'm talking about the actual. It's the them it's, actually doing that. That's what they're doing. That's but I'm saying they're, through they're, they're the preparing movie. for it, and then they're actually doing. It. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying most of the movie is the monster. It's focused games. around the monster, but I'm talking about the actual games when they're participating in the games. The, the sequences, correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. Very fun to look at, and mm. the music in this movie. Mm-hmm. I love jazz. Oh, jazz. Bio digital jazz, <laughs> man. <laughs> You know, totally. this movie this movie has such a great popping, yeah, kind of school spirit vibe. Right, right. Mixed with that classical jazz Monsters Inc. stuff. Yes. And it works really well. I agree. The main theme of this is just unforgettable. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of Pixar's best themes, in my opinion. I agree. I think it's super strong. It is. Um, and the supporting characters are very compelling as well. Yeah. I really love, um, I think his name's Larry or Lenny, the the guy that's all legs. He's just like, oh, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> He's so funny he is. and so interesting and a, a very college personality. Uh-huh. The old retired guy who's come back to finish college. Yes, um, yes, I like him. And then Squishy is, of course, a great character. Right. And they all have little arcs. Yes. It's mostly arcs of confidence. Sure. Of kind of becoming a more well-rounded version of yourself. Yep. The twins, of course, are great, mm-hmm. but the movie has a great kind of Ferris Bueller's Day Off kind oh, of feel to it. interesting comparison. Yeah, yeah I can see that. For Where sure. it's just a series of fun, light, yes, kind of, everyone's kind of just messing with each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Right. Nothing super uh, serious and like sure. someone's going to die. Sure. But it's, it's all emotional. It's all status. Mm-hmm. It's all like, that's what's important to these characters. Right. It doesn't have to be a life and death. They don't have to be banished to the human world. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's just a, their her, their sorority or their, you know, their group is going to be more popular, right. or more famous than us. And we're not going to get into what we need to get into. Sure, sure. You know, it's all status stuff. And then yes. the ultimate conclusion is the status of college doesn't matter outside of college. 
right because right. they go work at the mailroom and then <laughs> exactly. become scarce right. so it's like it, yeah. it's it all it all pans out um, yep. but we've talked enough about it i think it's yes. terrific okay good. i really enjoy it good um my number 23 is turning red turning red turning red yes i gave this one three and a half star so turning this is red. not my this is not my my 23 by the way it's not turning okay red, no. okay okay gotcha so t- turning red is a good movie um, I enjoyed watching it. It was fun. It was funny. It was different. I think the reason it's lower is because it's, first of all, focused on a female protagonist who uh, for me was a little more difficult to identify with I think, and relate to, <laughs> right? I guess. Although, although it's all like early 2000s nostalgia, yes. which I also found very odd. I loved it because I loved it. I guess I'm that old now, which is weird. You're over 30 years old. I know, but it's so <laughs> weird that they're doing that. I, again, I guess it's just you know, I think this getting is, older. I think, just what I happens, think this but... is where our 11-year age gap shines. Yes, yes. Is this movie to me is so wonderful. Okay, okay. So colorful. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. And so much of what I love from my era of animation. Okay. So I'm a massive Avatar fan. Avatar the Last Year was my best sure. favorite show ever. Sure, sure. Um, and this has a lot of that Japanese influence. It does. The yep. the kind of meshing of the two animation styles, mm-hmm. which is what Avatar all is. Yep. Um big anime guy. Big love it's very anime and I love anime. Yep. Um but yeah, they have those big eyes and they have those big personalities. Sure. And it's just really fun and popping and and it is cool it is you know that's true that's true it is it has a real energy to it and a real kind of um just warmth about it and the family story again it's not a movie i dislike you know i again these pixar films are so hard to rank because i do like all of them this one's so recent i've only seen again i've only seen it once so it was difficult to rank it and i I ultimately had just had to put it lower just because it didn't hit me hard emotionally it wasn't super memorable to me like the whole movie i don't really remember exactly what happens i know she turns into this giant red panda and it's it's basically like hulk but she's a a preteen yeah you love hulk i love hulk Hulk is like your favorite marvel i I was kind of looking forward to this but (laughs) what they did with it they just they played it more for laughs and no i don't think so i think i don't think it was played for laughs i think that i think that the i mean there's a character arc and everything but may's friend group yeah they were fun they are cool the best yeah i love those girls yeah obsessed with boy bands their personalities and their love and support for each other is so heartwarming it is and very relatable the way that they're acting to one sure sure is like their relationships felt very real yeah yeah i had no problem putting myself in the shoes of these characters okay okay there was no disconnect for me gotcha with anyone and yeah, the, the whole thing about like her, her extended family and right. and the whole history of the panda stuff was really mm-hmm. cool. And just the kind of analogy of of the panda and, and sure. the story that most Pixar movies deal with of growing up. And, right, right, and right. It's just really, I think it's really interesting and cool. It is. And I've never seen anything like it. Okay. I've never seen any yeah. movie kind of like this, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, it has that unique Pixar feel. Like mm-hmm. it feels very unique and different and it was easy to watch and fun and yeah, had a good time with it. But it's just not on my Pixar top keeps my making list. those original movies, they those do. original ideas. They need to keep doing Stop it. Stop doing spinoffs. Stop doing sequels. <laughs> Even though I love Incredibles 2. Yes. So what's your 23? I did my 23. Oh, yeah. You're going to do your okay. 23 now. My you said it was not turning reds. What is it? It's Lightyear. Lightyear. Okay. Wow. Lightyear's my 23. So pretty low. Pretty low. Yeah. Fun. Enjoyable. Yeah. We talked a lot about it. Um, we can go back yeah. and watch the review. We talked plenty about it. Yeah. But it's another one of those Pixar spinoff sequels. You right, know. right. Well, I it mean, doesn't necessarily it is, it deal with isn't. a side character like a traditional right, Pixar sequel does, but right. it's a spinoff. It's a kind of meta, like weird. <laughs> I wish, I wish it was a little bit. I wouldn't more even meta. call it a spinoff. Talk. So yeah, we've um, talked about Lightyear. Yeah, so Lightyear's 23. at twenty-three. My number twenty-two is Luca. Ooh. My twenty-two is Luca. I know you're a huge Luca. Luca is your fan. twenty-two? Yeah. Luca's twenty-two. Here's why. Here's why. Luca is, and we kind of talked about this. Luca is, is one of those super simple Pixar films. Mm-hmm. There's there's not a ton of depth. There's just, first of all, beautiful animation, mm. beautiful scenery, and a just fun little summer movie about friendship. I mean, that's 
that's it and, and sea monsters and sea monsters of course which is super fun and cool and i'm a huge fan of the ocean and underwater stuff aquaman's one of my favorite superheroes and it was really cool it was a really cool i give this one four stars it's like excellent film great relationships again very believable great voice acting performances i had fun with it it's one of those that's easy to watch anytime you can just throw on hang out with it but it lacked and it and it did hit me emotionally at the very end but it just didn't have that like super special wow factor that i'm looking for in certain pixar films okay okay you know what i mean i mean i'm having to silencio bruno because i'll talk about it when <laughs> i get to my list but um all right what's your 22 my 22 is you're not gonna believe this my 22 <laughs> is inside out oh inside out <laughs> wow okay i mean i think to me this speaks to have the quality of fix that inside out is the 22nd pixar movie to it's, me it's incredible um, yeah okay tell me why it's so i low. love inside out i think it's it's full of personality yeah it's full of emotion yeah clearly um <laughs> Five different ones, in fact. It just, um, I don't know. There's something about when I rewatch it, there's just, it gets less and less mm, impactful, yeah. less and less interesting. I hear you. I like the character of Riley. I like Joy, and I like Joy's arc that she goes through. Right, right. I like sadness, and I mm. like all of their, mm -hmm. I love their journey that they go on. Yep. Even though I feel kind of like um, anger, disgust, and fear have kind of nothing to do throughout the movie. I wish they were more involved. Okay, okay. Because I really like those characters a lot. Yeah. I think fear and anger and disgust could have learned so much more from each other. True. If they went on a journey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're kind of very static and yeah. don't really do anything. Right, right, right. Um, this is a joy movie. This is a movie about yeah, joy. Yeah, yeah, You could well, have called this movie Well, joy. I mean, for me, it's not about joy, but okay. You think it's more about sadness? Yeah. I mean, it's about joy, but the cares. <laughs> it's hard. The, it's about the, the character, character joy. joy. Yeah, that's what I'm but talking about. But it's actually about the theme of it's sadness. Yes. And yes. why it's okay yeah. to be sad. I agree. Yeah, yeah. You're, um, right. You're right. Which is why I think um, it's genius and I adore it. I, I like um, it a lot too. I just think, yeah. like I said, there's that little portion of the cast that's kind sure. of underused. Sure. And I like the the subconscious creative so like inventive. world. It's so inventive. It's so interesting. The islands and of personality. Visually, just visually different yeah. from anything yeah. they've done. Pixar does a great job visualizing abstract ideas. Yes. I don't know how they do it's this. It's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll talk about soul, but right. it's very visually interesting. It is, for sure. Um, so my number 20, what are we at now? 21, 21 is Lightyear. Okay. So I have Lightyear, you know, not super low, not quite as low as you, but around the same, you know, um, place because... Luca and Inside Out are our odd ones out. Right. Yeah. Those are those yeah. are both to each other lower than they yeah. should be. Yeah. So yeah, Lightyear, super fun. Again, just a fun. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. Love sci-fi action films, space travel, all that stuff. It was really funny. I watched You Let Me uh, Borrow First Man. Yeah. Right before the night before. And that was a that one got me so excited for Lightyear, <laughs> I feel like. Okay. I feel like if I hadn't watched First Man the night before, I would not have been nearly as excited and would not have liked it as much. Okay. I really do. I cool. really think it had a lot to Good. do with Good. why I liked Lightyear as much as I did. First Man is an all-timer. Yeah, we're going to do a First Man podcast. I really just want this whole <laughs> podcast to be about First Man um, no, 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 because no. it's one of my new favorite films. Honestly, it's 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 really up there That's with like, some of my favorite movies. That's wonderful. Yeah, we need to buy it and rewatch it. We do. So yeah, Lightyear is a fun movie. It's about teamwork. You know, it's fun. I can watch it anytime. And uh, so that's why it's at my number 21. My number 21 is Turning Red. Turning Red. Okay. Okay. Turning so red it's, my 21. Still, it's not like upper echelon, but it's, yeah. it's higher than I have. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's definitely higher. I already spoke about it, right. but it's really, I mean, I think it's actually our, our relationships with Buzz Lightyear and mine with Turning Red, yours with Lightyear, mine with Turning Red are very comparable, I think. Interesting. 2000 stuff I'm gotcha. very into. Gotcha. I sure, love 2000 sure. stuff and I love, right. you know, kind of like, I think like other like Asian cultures are interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed that probably about as much as you did Lightyear. Okay. Yeah, that makes um, sense. I think it's yeah. kind of where, okay. where we met. Yeah, that connects. Yeah. All right. So now I'm on to number 20, Cars 3. That's also my number 20. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So Cars 3, I initially thought I might have this a little higher because I really like Cars 3. I like Cars 3 a lot too. Cars 3. It's those Pixar trilogies. It's yeah, yeah, and it wrapped the way it wraps up the trilogy and 
again, it kind of just ignores Cars 2. I don't even think it mentions anything about the events of Cars 2. It's it just, it throws you back in you know with Lightning is? McQueen. It's a legacy sequel to Cars 1. It really is. It's 10, yeah, it's 11 years later mm-hmm. from Cars 1. And Lightning McQueen is aging. And it's all about, you know, kind of aging gracefully, knowing when it's your time to kind of step back, mm-hmm. you know, passing the baton, if you will, to the next generation. Right. You know, he kind of becomes Doc Hudson in the film. Oh, I mean, completely. Doc. It's by the end of the movie. He's literally Doc. Hudson. It's, yeah. And, and the way they <laughs> use Doc. Oh, yeah. The great Paul Newman, who yeah. voiced Doc mm-hmm. uh, in the original Cars, who had passed away by the time Cars 3 had come out. Mm-hmm. The way they used uh, footage of Doc and his voice and everything right, was right. so powerful. And they perfectly use Mater. He's back to the comic relief sidekick character. Mm-hmm. They introduce mm-hmm. Cruz Ramirez, as a great new character. Nathan Fillion's in this, who I'm a huge fan of. They just do a great job of getting back to the essentials of what Cars is about. It's racing, but it's all these life lessons. Yeah, it's through the racing. Humility. And, yep. The, the, the rookie pro yeah. relationship. Exactly. It's all about generational stuff, which makes for a good legacy sequel definitely. material. Yeah, the movie's so technically impressive. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, Doing anything with cars, yeah. um, making a car, which is an inanimate object, right. yeah. personable. It's crazy. It's so impressive. It is. And this, they really mastered it by right. the time they got to here. Yeah. Um, the technology of the world works super well. Mm-hmm. Um, you believe this is a car run world and society. Right. But just everything from the little, like the, the sand yeah. and the driving. Oh, uh, the beach sequences. The, Excellent. The mud and the big yes. mud driving. Right. It's just, it has great vistas. Yeah, the demolition takes us derby. To great... I'm so glad they did that demolition derby yeah. sequence. That yeah. is so fun. It takes us to great locations. It does. And, and varied textures. Yes. That yes. I really like. Yeah, great story. So yeah. yeah, Cars 3 is at 20. My number 19 is Coco. Okay, I'm surprised. Coco's this low for you. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Coco. And this is one I did get to rewatch. And it stayed about the same for me because it is beautiful visually. Again, it's going to be a theme here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, uh, the music is excellent. And yeah, I am a guitar player. So it, it's a lot of fun to watch the, the musical sequences, how they incorporate music into the film. It deals with this, you know, the Day of the Dead and the afterlife uh, right, in a right. way that's really interesting and different. Mm-hmm. Mexican culture, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. this movie has maybe the best twist of any Pixar film. It is very it is a, a twist that I just did not, wasn't even thinking about. Like mm-hmm. it just so came out of nowhere, but totally made sense yeah. and worked so well for the character and for the story. The end of the film definitely made me tear up. This is probably the first one on this list that made me tear up. Maybe Luca a little mm. bit. Okay. It, it is really strong storytelling mm-hmm. uh, from the visuals to the music, to the characters, it all works really well. It's, it's another one that I have some pacing issues with. I feel like it starts to drag in certain places and uh, it's not just like the tightest story they could have told, but all in all, very effective. It could have been higher on this list, but I just, this is where it ended up. Okay, good. It's not my 19. Okay, we're well, 19. Yep. My 19 is Brave. Really? My 19 is Brave. Wow. I really, really like this. This might be our biggest difference. I really, really like Brave a lot. <laughs> Brave is really cool. Brave is. Okay, yeah. Go but ahead. Brave is go also ahead. a Disney princess movie. It's a terrific Disney it's princess not. movie. Disagree. But it feels, Disagree. it definitely feels like <laughs> it's a story that is kind of in familiar territory. Sure. Even though it tackles pretty accurately Scotland in mid mid medieval ages totally. and and it has a great uh Merida is just a great character she's yeah. she's very strong and impressive and, mm-hmm. and interesting she goes through a great arc a great Disney princess arc which which we've seen before I mean it's 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 a girl and her mother and they have issues okay. and okay. they work them out okay you know it's great it's okay. great but I've seen it before okay um I love Mordu Mordu is a terrific villain very scary watch, watch the legend of mordu or just watch the movie they explained it in the movie pretty well they did but i like legend of mordu too. legend of it's mordu a nice companion great. piece to the i movie. like legend of mordu because it use, utilizes 2d exactly animation. bring back 2d um, hashtag 2d animation is not dead <laughs> anyways i like that so, okay. a lot cool so I that's just, your 19 um, yeah it's just a little bit lower i got gotcha. you it's not one that i think of as being super super you know gotcha gotcha okay yeah i hear you so I'm on to my number 18, which is Inside Out. So we already talked a little bit about okay. Inside Out. Again, this is another one that 
could have been higher. It was just where it ended up. But yeah, Inside Out is really good. Again, about why it's okay to be sad and feel your emotions, but be in mm-hmm. control of your emotions. It, it just did, did a great job of telling that story. And I really like Riley. She's super relatable. Mm-hmm. Her parents are great characters as well. Yeah. Really like both yeah. of the parents. The way they depicted them, I thought was really good. And so, yeah, we've, we've talked about it already, but um, I agree with some of your criticisms too about the, the supporting cast not being you know, at the forefront. Right. Uh, we did not mention Bing Bong, the MVP of the film. <laughs> Richard Kind, I like one Bing of his Bong. best roles. He did such a great job in that role of voicing that character. And that's such an emotional um, scene with him. So yeah, big fan of Inside Out. Really like it. What's your 18? I don't know that. I don't often cry during movies. Yeah, that's so. That's an impactful moment. I don't, it is. It's terrific. But I don't know that. I'm trying to think of a Pixar movie that's actually made me cry. Really? I don't know that I can remember one. Really? I don't okay. know. I mean, I always get emotional, but sure. I don't know that I've ever cried. Okay. I teared um, up. I teared up for Inside Out. I, I love Pixar. Cry. I love yeah. Pixar. It's. I just have right. a thing with crying in movies. Sure. I, there's, I don't it's know very what it is. It's very rare. Yeah. I've only done it for like my favorite movies right, of all time. Right. So what's your 18? My 18 is Cars. Cars. Okay. The first okay. Cars movie. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I love Cars. Cars is great. Grew up with Cars. Yeah. As, as many of us did. Yep. I've seen it countless times. Yeah. And it's such a strong movie. Yeah. It has such a great focus it on does. McQueen. It and does. his arc is, is just very compelling. Yeah. And everything from from this rich hotshot rookie mm. who's in the fast lane, yeah, getting literally trapped in the small town right. where everything's super slow sure. and sure. everyone's personable, you know. Yes, yes. And it's that personability that he's been completely lacking. Right. It's just a very compelling story. It is. It's so Owen much, Wilson so is fun perfect to casting too. Yeah. The entire cast is great. Uh, Bonnie Hunt as Sally is mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. really good. Great character who was kind of like McQueen. I'm, I'm, I kind of get right. that sense right. like she was from yeah. the big city. Like yeah, she, was an she kind of had a lot to do with all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. Yeah. kind of settled down into this better life, which mm-hmm. is slower, more about the people around you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, or the cars around you, I guess. <laughs> uh, beautiful scenery in this one, too. Yeah, you and know, the music is really interesting. Such a good soundtrack. It's it's very soundtrack heavy. It's very Americana. It's it's more soundtrack heavy than I think any other Pixar movie. Yes, yes. It's very like we're playing tunes. We're playing right. like music from right. Rascal Flatts. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's just a jukebox kind of right. soundtrack, which is and really that's, cool. And that ties into the whole Route sixty six thing, the kind of fifties throwback right. that the whole film has right. that vibe. You yes. know, yes, it's um, this um, it's kind of American era. It's American graffiti a little. Yeah, you know, yeah. It feels like yeah. that. It feels like it, flows it feels like American graffiti after the movie. When they all left, right, right, and it's like you're going back yeah, to it, and it's all right. dilapidated and gross exactly. and old, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go back to your hometown; it's never how you remember right, it, exactly. But yeah, this movie has a great, I and mean, there's so many great visual representations mm-hmm. of the arcs mm-hmm. of them fixing up the town, yes, of lightning building the road, yes, um, Doc, the and final him, race, him and racing on the dirt track, the dirt track, and then always slipping and sliding, and we got to mention Chick Hicks. Great. Michael Keaton. I love Chick Hicks. Michael Keaton is great as Chick Hicks. He is such a great villain. He's so good in that. He's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Cars is my 17. So that's why I want to talk about it too. Oh, okay. That's my next okay. one. So, good, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with everything you said. It's just a solid film. It's one of those that's, again, it has the emotion, doesn't make me cry, but that makes it easy to watch. So that's one mm-hmm. I've seen a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's fun. It's and funny. Love, and I love Mater. Mater's super fun. Mater is a great character. I don't care what anyone says. They go cow tipping or that tractor, is tractor, tractor tipping. tipping. <laughs> oh man, the be- world's best backwards driver. World's best backwards driver. That was driver. great too. You get to work with Bessie. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love all, all that That's stuff. So good. And so then good. when he's with um, he's with this super old car, and she's like just uh, talking yes. to herself. Yes. And he's like, he's like, what? And she's like, I wasn't <laughs> talking, talking to you. you. I'm like, oh man, it's great, so funny. Great cast. So, so what's your seventeen? My 17 is The Good Dinosaur. Wow. Okay. Okay. I, I get you, it. This is the you, most derided know, Pixar film. I know you love The Good Dinosaur. For many people, this is their lowest, which I don't I don't understand at all. But go ahead. This Why is, is it 17? This movie's brilliant. It's it brilliant. It is. It's gorgeous. And it was explained 
it was explained to me by a friend. One of my favorite descriptions of this movie, probably my favorite description of this movie I've ever heard. Yeah. It is, wow, look at all this beautiful scenery. It's almost photorealistic looking scenery. Yeah, totally. It's their most realistic looking animation they've ever done. And there's to, bunch, to date. <laughs> and there's a bunch of bathtub toys walking around. Yes, and exactly. It's so fun. I love that. It's so funny. I it's love so that. It's so cool. It's so great. And dangerous. And this movie has yes. such a great it's intense. juxtaposition. Yeah. Of the easy go, like just right. farm, super quiet, farm still life. fun, just easy, and that violent nature yes. of, of dinosaurs right. and and floods, and, floods and, yeah. and tornadoes, and just right. like crazy stuff always yeah. happening. Yeah, you know, it's I great. Think it's, it's, I think it's it is really great. strong. It is, it is such a great film. I, I really, again, just don't understand. Um, and Spot, the hate it gets. Spot has such a great emotional arc in yes, this movie. Him and Arlo, they're one of the great buddies. They both like lost to their family. Yeah. And they're stuck together, even mm-hmm. though they don't really like each other. And now right. they have to kind of yeah. work together. And then that final final scene where mm. Spot finds the, the other human beings yes. and, and Arlo like lets him Gets go. Me. And Gets there's me. never any communication between Arlo and Spot. Nope. Spot never speaks. Nope. The only human in the movie never talks. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, it's, it's very impressive. It's as extremely a impressive. Visual I love storytelling. I love the raptors. Raptors are great villains. I love the um, pterodactyls. Yes. Oh, the storm great. provides. That's right. Um, I love them. And most of all, of course, I love the T-Rex. The T-Rexes the T-Rexes. are great. The family of T-Rexes, the <laughs> daddy T-Rex voiced by the great Sam Elliott, who has one of the most iconic voices in cinematic history. He has he ever done anything voice. other than a cowboy? Not that I can think of. <laughs> I don't think he yeah. ever has. Yeah. Because he fits it so yeah. well. He, he does. Um, it's terrific. If you like Sam Elliott. It kind of looks like him. The T-Rex yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they model like it him. after him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can barely see his eyes and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like Sam Elliott, watch The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. Yes. I've that seen is this. such a, it sounds terrible. The title, it sounds like <laughs> the worst B movie you've ever heard. Yeah. It's his best performance. Really? It is such a great emotional intense character study hmm. okay. really good movie very underrated so i, I saw it on hulu but I yeah seen you it. should check it out i haven't watched it so your what's number, your what's your 17? that was my, my 17 se- my 17 was cars your 17 was Se- was good dinosaur, that good was dinosaur. 17, my yeah. 16 is incredibles 2 so it didn't quite make that top 15 it was like right there okay it was close. Um, I went back and forth in this one and the next one a lot. Incredibles 2 is a great sequel. Uh, this is now we're into four and a half star territory. Okay. So we're into like all these are now great, you know, like truly great movies that I consider to be like, again, almost five star, like four and a half stars. I agree. Brad Bird does a great job, as always. We're going to talk a lot about Brad Bird. Brad Bird's my favorite Moving director. Forward. Brad Bird's my favorite director of all time. Yes. He made my favorite movie, The Iron Giant. Exactly. His first movie. Right. So I'll let you talk about Incredibles 2 because it's later in my list. Okay, sure. Um, Incredibles 2 does a great job of what, what you can only do in animation, which is this is 14 years after Incredibles 1. And they pick up exactly where the first one left <laughs> off. So I cool. loved that. I know. I thought that was so cool. That we just get to see their fight with the underminer, and then we take off on this new story with uh, with with Helen becoming the focus. Mm. You know, the Devers coming in. Mm. Bob gets to stay at home with the kids, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they have some fun antics there. And then you have Helen, kind of, you know, in this whole kind of villain plot she's getting caught up in, and it's kind of mystery and. Um, who's the villain and what are they after and the way it comments on our modern society of screens, you know, screens everywhere, the yeah. screen slaver, you know, screen we're enslaved slave. to Great. our screens. I don't know how Brad Bird came up with so many superhero names it's great it's that great. Have never been used and they're all clever right exactly yeah <laughs> yeah it's it is very clever and and that's great about them of course and we'll talk more about them in the Incredibles one but yeah. all their powers fit their personalities mm-hmm. and um, it's the best fantastic four movie ever it is absolutely other than uh, the first incredibles movie. i yeah. mean i was talking mostly about that but you know sure, I mean. sure but yeah it just doesn't quite connect emotionally as much as the first one even though it's still very relatable mm-hmm. i feel it's not quite as exciting as the first one um mm. i don't feel like the villain is quite as strong although they they give her a great backstory mm-hmm you know, for me, for whatever reason, it just doesn't quite hit that high, the high highs of Incredibles 1. I mean, a sequel is almost impossible to hit 
well that because well, it's a new thing and it's a different thing. i think i think it's because it's an incredible sequel that's true that it's different true. because incredibles is just it's one of the best it's yeah it's one of the best movies yeah <laughs> but i'll talk about it later but yeah but it. the the action in it is phenomenal the animation of course is is even leaps and bounds above the original it's amazing looks incredible amazing the cinematography the lighting the action scenes the way they use incredible uh, elastigirl's powers all their powers all their powers but specifically elastigirl she really gets to shine in this film yeah. because the way she uses the elasticycle mm. is mm. so cool i mean it, it's one of the best <laughs> action sequences in any pixar film and yeah. any maybe any comic book film really when she's chasing the train and trying to stop the train, it is just so exciting to watch. I always want more Frozone. They gave us some Frozone in this, but not enough. Frozone in it was this. not he enough. He rescues the kids. He does a great job. He does he more does in this than he does in the first movie. Yeah, you're right. I just want a Frozone film, I think. <laughs> Honestly, is what it is. Jack Jack, of course, we get to see all his powers after the Jack Jack attack. Mm-hmm. Short. Mm-hmm. That was tons of Jack fun. Jack's actually in this one. He's not even in the first movie, really. He's in it. He's a he's baby. Not, right. He's not Jack yeah, Jack. Right. You know? Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Again, we have fun with Bob and the kids at home and him kind of being super dad and and him learning that that's super too. Like there's, Mm -hmm. he doesn't just have to Mm -hmm. go out and fight crime to be super. Yeah. Um, Being a parent is super enough. Right. You know, right. And And harder. That's kind of his, his whole skill set isn't built for the situations he's being put in. Yeah. And he has to really grow as a character Mm -hmm. in this, which is cool. And Mm -hmm. and Elastigirl grows too. And again, sure. Her kind of story is more about the plot, I feel, than her character development. But I think it works. Okay. I think okay. it works. So yeah, it's a it's one I like. But we'll talk about it more when we when you, we get to yours. What's your sixteen? Love it. My number sixteen is Coco. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. Coco is my number sixteen. That's a good spot for it. That's I really like it. Coco. I could have gone higher with it. The attention to detail in this movie is yes. incredible, amazing. Um, the fact that they're playing chords that are the actual yeah. chords. Their fingers are actually doing the chord fingering. And, yeah, it's incredible. Um, it's just a, a terrific movie. I love it's again, it's so visual. Yeah. Like we like we talked about earlier, Pixar visualizes abstract ideas right. of kind of the afterlife and mm-hmm. and the the visual language of someone's skeleton deteriorating with their memory. Uh, as yeah, a person who forgets great. them, yeah. They mm-hmm. become less real, you know. Excellent. That's such an interesting idea. It is. And doing that visually mm-hmm. is like I don't know how you even start to think about yeah, something like that. I know. You know. So creative. And yeah, the culture is yeah, just is just yeah. everywhere in this movie. And right. um, music is so important mm-hmm. in this in this film. This this is the kind of movie I kind of want to dance while I'm watching it. Yeah, right. You know, right. So much fun. So yeah, much fun. it is. I agree. My number 15 is Ratatouille. So Ratatouille is what? right above, right above Incredibles. Your number two. 15 is Ratatouille? Yeah, number 15 okay yeah so it's right above incredibles 2 for me my wife will freak out when she hears this because this is her all-time favorite <laughs> i love film. ratatouille it's great look it's a great movie it, it is really fun it's really again just unique so creative brad bird doing a great job <laughs> this is the one that's maybe like, the second most disdained creature second most hated creature yeah yeah maybe the most other than cockroach i think cockroaches are worse mm, maybe maybe <laughs> um i don't know you find a rat in your house you're gonna freak out more than a cockroach. yeah that's true you can't really stomp yeah. on a rat right mm. i mean you can but it's not pretty nice now <laughs> but a rat that can cook that's just such a great idea because the last thing you want in your kitchen is a rat mm-hmm. and the the fact that they're making this rat character someone who loves the culinary arts and just has a dream of being a great chef and he's mm-hmm. in paris mm-hmm. the food capital of the world and it was just it's just such a great, again, concept of like all these ideas coming together and the way he tells the story, you know, uh, anyone can cook, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. whole idea mm-hmm. of, you know, it doesn't yeah, so matter where you come from or who right, you are, you right. can do whatever you want. Sig Parvis Magna. Exactly. Greatness from small beginnings. Exactly. Yeah. I keep making video game references. Yeah, I don't know. I need to stop. You're a gamer. I know, I'm, I'm a sorry. Gamer. I'm sorry. So we'll talk about it more when you get to it, if you want, if you want to hold off on your thoughts. Well, it'll be a while. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. I love Ratatouille. I think it's great. It's lots of fun. Uh, it just doesn't, again, it doesn't hit me emotionally until Anton Ego's scene, um, which is a great scene uh, when he remembers back to his childhood. Oh, okay. Um, okay. That's a great moment, but that's really it. I, I don't really like Remy's family. Like his dad <laughs> seems kind of just like a jerk. The whole time okay and i guess that's the okay. point but 
I would have rather like kind of liked them. I just kind of want him to get away from them and just be with Linguini and do his thing. Well, I kind of wanted a little more emotional about, connection to his family, I guess. Is what that's I what I love about Remy and Linguini is that right. when they have troubles, right? Remy reverts to the kind of person he doesn't want to be. Sure. But sure, that he sure. kind of is comfortable being. Yeah. At that point. Anyways, yeah, I'll talk you. about it later. Again, it's some, terrific. Some pacing issues. The, the, the soundtrack is great. And yeah, the, the, the balancing act of Remy's story with Linguini's story, I feel, is always a little... Dis, there's a little bit of a disconnect for me hmm. um okay for some reason of they don't mesh for whatever reason uh when i'm watching it 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 feels like a little little bit of a disconnect between the two even though they're connected through linguini's dad mm-hmm. i feel like there's just not um and maybe i'm missing something um but i feel like there's not a doesn't coalesce uh perfectly okay. for me um, I'll, talk your, about, I'll talk about it later fifth, but what's your 15 okay my 15, 15 yeah okay my 15 i was gonna say <laughs> Go ahead. You can, you can say no, I was just saying, it. like Linguini and Remy's relation, their friendship, yeah, is like the opposite of every other Pixar friendship. Okay, where they're not like buddies all the time. Mm, they're okay. always at odds with each other. Kind interesting, of interesting, interesting. And yeah. even though they help each other, they're still kind of using each other in some okay. ways. Okay. So it's like this really, they're not really friends yeah, until the yeah. end. Of the movie. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, that could be it. That could be what I'm thinking. Anyways, What's your 15? My 15 is up. Whoa. <laughs> up is my number 15. Up is up a lot higher on my list. <laughs> up is low. <laughs> up is way too low. <laughs> so why is up 15? So okay. I'm scratching my head on this one, literally. So up to me. <laughs> Um, the married life portion of Up. The opening sequence. Yeah. The cry sequence. Right. The let the tears flow. Is a <laughs> scene. It's a terrific sequence. It is. It's one of Pixar's best shorts they've ever made. <laughs> um, okay. And then the rest of the movie is fine. Okay. Okay. I've heard, th- I've the heard rest this of the argument. movie is I've fine. heard this. I've heard this. I like, I've heard this complaint. I like Russell. I like what Russell yes. represents. Yes. I like Carl's relationship with Russell and they're kind of like, I never got to have a kid. And like this, this yes. is a net, net kid I have to deal with. Right. Doug has a nice little great. arc. Great. I, great. I really great. like his little like stuff he has going on there. Yeah. Love the villain. This is one Carl of Pixar's, Muntz. one of Pixar's strongest villains. I think I completely agree. Um, Charles Muntz is so cool. So cool. Such a, I love that the hero is, Looks up to the villain. Yes. That's a terrific idea. Great. And it works so well. It does. Um, Never meet your heroes. And he is like truly evil. Oh, yeah. He is oh, like yeah. totally, a real totally villain. ruthless. Yes. And really scary. Definitely. The dinner scene is like so intense. Super intense. suspenseful. Super oh, intense. man. It's so great. Oh. But she's gone now. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ooh. You know, freaky, freaky stuff. The dogs. And how the, how the dogs, dogs great. your friendly dogs, you know, we know yeah. Doug, we meet Doug early sure. and then they can turn yeah. so suddenly yeah. to, to dangerous, you know, yeah, absolutely. animals. Um, yep. I like up. I just think that it's highly overrated. Okay. I think that many people kind of neglect the majority of the movie. Okay. Which is really interesting. Mm. Just the, the whole discussion of is an, in, is a opening more important mm. than an ending of a movie. Mm. Because okay. I think that the ending of Up is kind of weak. Okay. It's kind of just abruptly, it kind of just fizzles off. <laughs> okay. 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 But the beginning's super strong. Sure. And everyone remembers the beginning. Right. That's the right. first thing you see. It's the thing you're thinking yeah. about the whole movie. Sure. Sure. But the ending of Up is like whatever, you know. Okay. It's fine for Carl's art or for uh, for Russell's art. Mm. Um, but but for Carl, it's kind of just just kind of keeps going. And to, mm. and to Doug's adventures or whatever. Right, Doug that, Days. Doug Days. Yeah. I love yeah. Doug Days. Doug fun. Days is cool. All right, we'll talk about Up later because, <laughs> again, Up way higher on the list. My number 14 is Finding Nemo. Mm. And so Finding Nemo is maybe, well, other than Toy Story, the one I've seen the most because you watch this on repeat <laughs> <laughs> as a kid. And it's fun. Look, it's a fun movie. It has a great story. Beautiful. Marlon has a great story arc. And, oh, and the, the Marlon and Coral. 
<laughs> Marlon and Coral are my Carl and Ellie. Right, right. Oh, right. Marlon and Coral. It's a great opening scene. Another great opening scene. Yeah, Another yeah. gut wrenching opening. Except scene. the rest of Nemo's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is good. It's uh, Marlon's whole story of letting Nemo grow up, Mm -hmm. letting go, Mm -hmm. and that kind of worried parent, which look, I mean, he suffered such a traumatic event. I know. You can't blame the guy. Yeah. But, you know, he learns an important lesson um, about letting go and, and, you know, letting your kid live uh, his own life, Mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Um, not being and trusting, over, trusting him, trusting him, not being overprotective, right. overbearing. Right. That's all. That's all important things that you know. Is, it can be difficult for a lot of parents. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a really important story. Dory is such a great character. Perfectly so used. fun, perfectly, funny, perfectly utilized. Absolutely. And the Tank Gang love the, the tank, tank Gang are so much. Fun. Why don't we have Tank Gang shorts on Disney Plus? We should. We should because <laughs> first of all, Willem Dafoe as Gil is like flawless cast isn't it it is so perfect and so it's good. so much fun to spend time in that tank because you think like okay this adventure through the ocean and you're there with Marlon and Dory and like well this is super exciting the sharks and you know the jellies and the turtles and all that is super fun but I really like the tank scenes the tank scenes are super important Gil is the perfect mentor for Nemo absolutely absolutely Perfect he's mentor. the fish who's been through it you know and he's like seen it all and he has a disability like nemo does yeah, absolutely so cool yes and he he teaches nemo you can do this stuff mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want it doesn't yeah. matter that you have this problem mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and nemo becomes the hero i mean he you know does the whole um, swim down swim down yeah. and, and you know clogs up the filter and oh i was thinking um, the fisher fisherman's swim down thing that was kind of oh sure he does that at the end too yeah yeah, yeah. but before that he kind of his first step is like right right getting the, the, the tank, rock getting the, the rock yeah, in there yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. the whole all the dentist office stuff is funny i think that's just so a great funny. kind of setting the and, movies in australia for some reason i love that well it makes so I much love sense it too. because the great barrier reef great barrier and all reef, that eac um I love it. It's so good. Yeah, the even the um, pelican, <laughs> Nigel. He is a great character. All these Nigel. little and all these little moments, like them, all the fish, like telling Mar- Marlin's story, the dolphins, yes, and the it, montage, kind of going yeah. through, and yeah, so many great sequences. It, it's just one of those really great movies that you can watch anytime. It gets very emotional, funny, mm-hmm. and we've got to talk about Andrew Stanton, director of this film, who mm-hmm. is one of the great directors just of our time because finding nemo finding dory mm. wally which we'll get to <laughs> and um the highly underrated john carter which mm. i am a huge fan of mm-hmm. he just does a great job telling the story he's a great storyteller uh, he tells stories visually and he does it so well and uh yeah so this one again we're in the upper echelon here so any of these could be higher or yeah. lower but this is where I put it because I got a little annoyed with it after you watched it for the 5,000th <laughs> time as a two-year-old. I'll, I'll still never never get tired of it. I know. I know. Um, so that was my 14. What's yours? My 14 is Onward. Really? Okay. Okay. Onward yeah. is my 14. Onward's great. Onward's great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a brother movie. It's a brother movie. It's a brother movie. We I love, love it. it. We watched it together. We love it. It was great. We love it brother so much movies. Fun. Yeah. Onward is this... It's a quest. Incredible mesh of modern with fantasy. Love it. Such an invent, another just great inventive idea. Um, the idea of like fantasy characters playing D and D and like yeah. fantasy games and driving cars and like and also yeah yeah <laughs> like it's such a cool idea. Things that we do every yeah. day and the whole premise of magic exists, but mm. eh, magic's hard to do. Right. So right. we're just not going to do it. Yeah. People just got kind of tired and lazy. We got know? technology now. We don't need it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very much a commentary on our world. Totally. Yeah, totally. totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's super yeah. cool. And the whole just hero's journey of it. Uh-huh. Tom Holland and and uh, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. Very unexpected cast. Definitely. But very they work unexpected. so well together. They do a really good job. Very believable as brothers. brothers. Yeah. Very believable. I almost completely forget that they're that they're in the roles yeah yeah they, i don't they, hear their voices yeah, i hear the characters yeah, they disappear really well into it right and it's all about their dad really it's all it's about, it's all their, about their relationship with their dad with their or they dad. didn't really you know one of them got to meet one of them really right. didn't get to meet right the ending is so emotional Very because emotional. he lets him have that moment mm-hmm. you know explains that he had 
um, his brother there for him the yeah, whole time. Yeah. It's it's really it really powerful. It's I think super um, awesome. Um, this one's more underrated than I think most. I think most I think people put is. this lower yeah. on their list. Yeah. Definitely stri- strikes a chord. This one definitely definitely. Um, my number thirteen is Monsters Inc. Ooh. So Monsters Inc. is another one that you watched on repeat <laughs> over and over. That I watched. This is a what lot. I'm, this is why I like this turning I red. You might have watched more. This is why I like turning red. This is all 2000 stuff. You might have watched this one more than Nemo, but I have Maybe. it higher than Nemo because it's right above Nemo because I enjoy this story a little bit more because of again the inventiveness of Monster in Your Closet. <laughs> yeah, every That's every kid knows idea. this, but what's Where's that monster from? What does so, that monster yeah. do when it's not scaring the you? The idea that the monster is only scaring you because that's his job. Yes. That's I mean, literally his job. He, he has to, to do factory. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's funny. the most smart, uh, yeah, again, just crazy creative <laughs> idea. And silly, silly Mike idea. and Sully's relationship is great. They're buddies in this. Mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. you know, super close. Yeah. And, you know, Goodman and Crystal, they just knock it out of the park. Their performances are phenomenal all the way duet. through. And literally, yeah. the duet at the yeah, end of the film, yeah, they yeah. sing together so well. <laughs> Again, it's just filled with great characters, such a rich world that you mm-hmm. kind of just want to get lost in Monstropolis. Um, Harry Housen's great reference to Ray Harry Housen. <laughs> Harry Housen. Yeah. It's impossible to get a reservation yeah. there. And we quote this one a lot too. I feel like especially... When a our- kid flew right over me and blasted <laughs> a car with its laser vision. I love that. It shook me like, shook a, me dog. like a dog. This is my it's dog. true. I saw yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, so many great <laughs> moments. But the emotional story of, okay, this kid gets loose and we have to take care of this kid. First of all, kids are toxic. Right, but the kid's toxic. That's the whole thing. It's like the kid's toxic. So we can't touch the kid. We shouldn't be near the kid. But we have to take care of the kid and fix this whole problem. I know it sounds crazy. But she's not toxic. Right, right. And then um, this one has, you mentioned Charles Muntz is a great villain. Randall is an excellent villain. Yes, Randall. Slimy, creepy, crawly Randall who Uh, can shape shift mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or camouflage, I should say. Yeah. Great villain. And Mr. Waternoos, Mm -hmm. who you don't Mm -hmm. really know if he's a villain until the end, but he gets scary. Yeah, he gets scary. And um, so, yeah, great. Celia is another great yeah, character. Yeah, the movie I like. does a really cool job of making us like the scary monsters right. and then the monsters scaring us. Yes. It's really cool. Yes. The monsters are kind of silly and fun, but they can <laughs> also be scary. Yeah, yeah. And all the doors, that whole sequence where they're riding on the doors and oh, going in and out of the doors. I mean, that so is just elaborate. so cool. Yeah. So well animated. And this one was right after Toy Story 2. Yeah. So this is 2001. Yeah. This is early Pixar. Mm-hmm. And it holds up super well. Timeless. The story is just so great. Again, comedy, drama, mm-hmm. emotion. It's all there. It's super well paced. I, I, this one just flies by I agree. for me. I agree. And so, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. The boo, of course, the ending just kills me mm. with boo. Mm. And the re- that's Mike, another, yeah, Mike that's, spending all that yeah. time recreating that door. Just mm-hmm. thinking about what went into that. And he <laughs> did that for his friend. Through. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's just a great, great ending. It's Beautiful. one of the best endings to any Pixar film. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. The ending to Monsters Inc. is better than the opening top. <laughs> wow. Bold claim. All right. So that was my 13. What's your 13? My 13 is A Bug's Life. Wow. Okay. Okay. Which is actually, it's pretty high. That's pretty high. Life. That's pretty high for, for a someone life. who, for someone who was, who's not a '90s kid like you. Exactly. I love a bug's exactly. life. <laughs> a bug's life is such such an awesome, awesome idea. It is of the many rising up against the few. Yes. And even though they're scarier than us, yeah. we're stronger than they are. Right. And I love the circus. Oh idea. yes, PT Flea. The oh, circus. Man. A bug circus. So you're making a the movie. Flea, well, it's a flea a, circus. It's, it's, it's all. It's a. It's all a pun. Pun. It's all just like. <laughs> great it's so funny it's so good pt yeah you're making circus. you're making a movie about bugs right mostly ants right but it's not ants it's no. bugs yeah um and and you have these bugs that are super afraid of these big grasshoppers right this inventive ant yeah. who's really oh, just yeah who's really just kind of inventor. yeah he's really just kind of like shunned by society yeah 
We're kind of like, we don't like Flick. He's yeah. weird. He's weird. Yeah. So we send him away. Right. You just go away, right. Flick. You're causing us problems. Yes. Yes. They literally send them on a wild beast. Yeah. Go and find bigger, stronger bugs yeah. to come and fight our battles right. for us. Right. And what's so cool is he goes and he finds the bigger, stronger bugs. Right. But it's a mi- and, mistaken identity. Yeah. Him, you know, which is great. I like that he maintains his innocence throughout the film. Totally. Oh, great warrior yeah, bugs. Right, you know, right. it's so cool. Oh, he's a and they just scout. They just want to draw a job. Yeah. So they don't care. Yeah. A talent scout. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very impressive that they mm-hmm. managed to tell a story where they can have such a misunderstanding exist and our hero not be a deceiver. You know? Right, exactly. To where he That's can, very important. he can like coerce them into doing what he's asking without manipulating them. Yes, exactly. You know, exactly. and his inventiveness pays off with the big mm, bird mm-hmm. and the bird and even bigger bug. You know, right, even bigger right. like monster. It's a great movie. It is visually, obviously, it doesn't hold up to to modern standards, but it's cartoony sure. enough sure. to where it has that kind of timeless, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. cartoon aesthetic right that works yeah um and they're smart in what they did with with the original toy story Mm -hmm. we can't make people look like people we can make them look plastic sure so let's just make it about toys yeah exactly you know great idea bugs are a little bit more to their strengths yeah yeah. knew their weaknesses right there are so few like people like Mm -hmm. not necessarily people like human being people but yeah few characters in the movie it's it's very isolated and, and distant yeah I'm, I'm thinking like the cantina, the bug cantina. Uh, I love it. Who ordered the poo poo platter? Well, there's that. There's the bug diner, and then there's the um the. Oh, you're talking about the uh, grasshopper uh, cantina. Yes, right, right, right. Like who got Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So good. So it's good. so cool. And then the the scale of all of the ants and their elaborate society. Right, right, right. So and the cool. fact that his inventiveness comes back and helps them. And... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a great film. We'll talk about it more in a minute because yeah, uh, it's higher on my list. So my number 12 is Onward. Okay, cool. So I have this one a little bit higher than yeah. you, but around the same spot. So yeah, for all the reasons we talked about, great quest mm-hmm. story, great brother storyline, inventive, modern fantasy aesthetic and look to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, great casting and emotional ending, you know, yeah. that Pixar does so well. Yeah. Um, so what's your 12? My 12 is Incredibles 2. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Incredible. Good is spot for it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's not quite top ten Pixar movies ever, sure, but sure. Uh, compared to every other Pixar sequel, it's a masterpiece. Okay. I mean, it does. I mean, the Toy Story sequel <sighs> exists. So yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Toy Story but is yes. marvelous. <laughs> But um, Incredibles 2 has this, it's just pure joy for yeah, me to it watch. Is. It is so fun to, to watch. watch Brad Bird. But well, we waited for this. so long. I know. I know. I waited my whole life. It came out right Literally. when I was born. Literally. The year after you were born, yeah. Incredibles 1 came out. Yeah. And yeah, it's just 14 years later to get to it. watch that and, and yeah. see his style of those characters be like refined and perfected. Mm. They all mm. look just so awesome they and do. perfect. They do. Um, the kinetic energy. Mm-hmm. of every punch yeah is so good and i think yeah, a lot of it is sound it. design True. and so much of it is animation True. Brad yeah. Bird's such an such an animation genius yeah he is he's just he does such a great job at at what makes animation good mm-hmm. and and unique and he special does. and set apart yeah while also bringing in those um real life lighting techniques and yep. camera operations mm-hmm. and and all of that just super cool super cool yeah and this movie really it just highlights not just the character of bob um mr incredible who who's gone through a completely different arc in this as he does in the first one right whereas in the first one it's more he's trying to relive the glory days and he's trying to he's trying to be this person he's not yeah trying to be stronger Mm -hmm. and now he has to be this this father figure Mm -hmm. in a way that he hasn't been before right not just this man of action, but mm-hmm. this gentle, kind, right, right. understanding, patient person <clears throat> for someone who has super strength. Yes. To have them to force to be delicate with yeah. things yeah. is such a great idea. It is. It's it like is. the best stuff that Hulk does is, yes. is when he has to be delicate Betty. with people and yeah. things. And that just works very well here. Yeah. Elastigirl, who is this, some person who's like, who, who's 
it was goes through kind of a similar arc as Bob does in the first movie, where instead of wanting to relive the glory days, she forgot mm. about how great they were. Mm. And now that she's remembering them, she's like, yeah. oh, I totally understand why Bob wanted to be it, a hero yeah. again. Because right. it's so much fun, you know? Yeah. And we have so much fun with Elastigirl. Right, right. And she's so great. And yeah. uh, and Dev Tech. I love Evelyn Dever is the villain's name. Evil Endeavor. It was ah. right in front of us, folks. It's so good. And Redbird always does right. that. He, he always has oh, yeah. that kind of, you okay. know, that wink and nudge with these Pixar Definitely. Uh, movies. Uh, Syndrome even has that too. Syndrome, sure. hero, hero Syndrome is right someone right. who's pretending to be a hero exactly. even though exactly. they're not it's great it's i love incredibles too yeah that the effects of the film and mm-hmm. the the techniques used are yeah. incredible absolutely an apt word to describe the film. <laughs> uh, my number 11 is brave wow yeah so it almost made my top it's 10. high it was... brave <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> it was almost in my top 10 it was so close this movie i feel is unlike any princess film i totally disagree it, it okay. is to me okay. to me the disney princess film has never fully explored the princess queen dynamic in such a way okay um we've had princess king dynamic and mm. we've had like mm-hmm. you know you mean like mother daughter stuff yeah, yeah that's what i'm talking about right, like all the right. stuff with merida and eleanor in this is mm-hmm. so good the casting is excellent emma thompson is phenomenal as eleanor the like you mentioned the scottish medieval Mm -hmm. aesthetic is just i feel perfect Mm -hmm. the music scottish music that they use is so it's just has this unique feel whereas i feel like the disney princess movies all kind of feel like similar fairy Mm tale-y like Mm -hmm. no specific time or place you know right right. it's very fantasy exactly this is much more grounded this has a much more grounded feel it's all authentic scottish history Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they're adding in this fantastical elements right which is still congruent with the the scottish roots exactly yes it's all based in scottish mythology Mm -hmm. and all that and the witch you know who again love boo if you know if you know the pixar theory from monsters inc brave is like (laughs) the linchpin of the pixar sure pretty much so and i'm a huge fan of that whole thing so that's tons of fun. fun And but just as a story, it works super well. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch, exciting and energetic, kind of scary. It's probably one of the scarier, I would say maybe the scariest Pixar film. Actually. Sure. Yeah. It gets really intense. The stuff with Mordu at the end, mm-hmm. really exciting sequences. You know, her just shooting her bow, riding her horse. Yeah, All that yeah. is so much fun. The brothers have a great role. Yeah. I really like yeah. them. The, I'm glad there's not a brave two because then it'd be about three like brothers. triplets. Yeah. And, that could be fun if they're older though. They're like warriors now, <laughs> you know? Okay. She's taught them all how to use a bow. Yeah. And they have yeah, to fight, yeah. you know, someone. I the don't three know. kings. We exactly. three kings. Right. Would be called. <laughs> um, so yeah, the cast is great. The music. I just really like the story of a mother daughter mm-hmm. connection, which is again just rare in film i feel like like there's not a ton of it's usually a father-son story and so it was really cool to see that i think it was unique and she has such a unique character design the hair is of course a huge thing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how they animated that and everything and just great lessons are learned i feel like in this movie the character arcs are really great Mm -hmm. Um, i really feel the emotional connection with them at the end and yeah it's just tons of fun the queen turning into the bear and having to deal with that whole mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. there's a lot of fun a lot of funny moments in it too yeah, yeah. mixed in with the emotion and the drama and it's just really well shot and lit and everything well lit. Yeah. i just so well i think it's just so well done on every level it is it is so yeah great score great soundtrack yeah so what's your 11 my 11 is toy story 2 really okay so didn't quite make 11. your top 10 didn't quite make the top 10. Gotcha. Um, but you're a big fan of this. Movie. I am a big fan of Toy Story 2. I thought you liked this one more than some of the other Toy Story sequels, actually. No, I think it's shaky with the Toy Story movies because ranking those movies, I feel, is almost different than compared to other Pixar movies, you know? Sure, sure. It's it's odd, but sure. Toy Story 2, I really like. Yeah. It has a lot of strengths, mm-hmm. but it does a thing that some sequels do that I don't necessarily not like, 
Yeah. But it's it's this kind of dispersal of characters mm, mm-hmm. where Woody's no longer with Buzz. Yeah. Um, characters are kind of just divided. You know? Right. They yeah. do this in Empire. They do this in a bunch of different yeah, sequels. Yeah, yeah. I feel to me, it feels like you take the strength of Woody and Buzz's relationship and their chemistry and how they work as a team really well together. Mm-hmm. And yet that's missing throughout the whole movie. Sure. So we get some great Buzz stuff. We get some great light year lore. And he kind of yeah. steps up as a leader to the group, right. which comes back later mm-hmm. uh, in a more impactful way in 3D. Sure. Um, but this is really very focused on Woody, right. very focused on his his arc and his dilemma yeah. and his fear of losing Andy. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and to me, all of this builds and makes Toy Story 3 all the better for it. Gotcha. Um, I love Jesse. This movie's oh. very Jesse heavy. Um, when She Loved Me, the whole oh. sequence is terrific. Yes. I love Sarah McLachlan. Sarah McLachlan. Um, I love um, Al as a villain. Al from Al's Toy villain. Barn. This is, is so this is cool. Two great villains. Two great villains. <laughs> Stinky Pete yep. is a good villain. He is. A little one-dimensional, but understandable. Um, he has a great motives. motivation. Great understandable motivation. motives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's Toy Story 2, man. Okay. I, I like it a gotcha. lot. We'll talk about it more when I get to it. Yeah. Um, so now we're in our top 10. These are the top 10 Pixar films on our list. My number 10 is the good dinosaur mm. so this mm. one made my top 10 because we talked about it a little bit earlier impeccable animation i mean animation at a level that i still really don't think they've been able to top as far as just it looking so real <laughs> the you scale is so large too large scale it's all in natural environments mm-hmm. Right, um, which is incredible. It looks like they went out and just shot actual live action footage and then just put animated dinosaurs mm-hmm. in it. I mean, that's how good it looks to me. And then, like you said, rubber bathtub toys. I think that's a great, yeah, uh, yeah. great way to describe them because, yeah, they're very cartoony looking dinosaurs. And I think they did that to differentiate them. Mainly oh, it's, I think because... it's brilliant. I think I think that the fact that they can make photorealistic stuff, yeah, and they decide to make it cartoony, yes, exactly. speaks so much to, to their skill. Totally, you know. Totally. Yeah, that you're able to differentiate each character very easily um, through just the way they look. And it's great visual storytelling. You don't need any dialogue to understand this film. Mm-hmm. It's one of those movies. Yeah. Um, it has a great journey quest kind of that Arlo goes on with Spot. Look, the reason I like this movie so much is because it's a Western. <laughs> um, I'll just come out and say it. I'm a huge fan of the Western genre. They do such a good job of taking you on this journey as if this lonely farm boy was Mm -hmm. caught up in this quest yeah yeah. and he meets all these crazy cowboys and outlaws and Mm -hmm. there's these stampedes he gets caught up i mean it's literally a western i mean it's just told in the pixar style and it's so unique and fun we mentioned san elliott and Mm -hmm. the supporting cast they're all great some great set pieces you know like i said with the stampede the pterodactyls in the clouds, mm, mm-hmm. the sharks. Yeah, shark um, fans. Yeah. It, it was so cool. Uh, this I got to rewatch this one as well. Okay. Um, and it just was visually stunning. And emotional story about him growing up and finding his place, yeah. him, you yeah. know, making his mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that's re- what the whole film is really about. Yep. And uh You know, the loss of his father is, of course, a big moment. Maybe Mm -hmm. it doesn't hit as hard emotionally as some other Pixar deaths, but the ending, because you don't, you don't spend a lot of time with his dad, him and his dad, but the ending when Spot finds his new family Mm -hmm. and has to say goodbye to Arlo, that is what gets me Mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. It's so well done because they've gone on this huge journey together. Like you said, they hate each other to Mm -hmm. begin with. They don't Mm -hmm. want anything to do with each other. Yeah. They end up having to rely on each other, care so much about each other um, that it makes that moment really difficult. But then when he gets back home and the journey's over, mm-hmm. uh, it just, it's such a triumphant ending, yeah. I feel. Courage. Uh, I just, it's courage is what Arlo totally. learns in this movie. Courage and, and bravery. The courage from, from a spot who has too much courage. And Correct. is too active. Yeah. And is, yeah. And is it too, he has too, to settle too down. Violent, you know? yeah. yeah, he has to right. be more timid and cautious with things. Right. And, Right. That's a good good lesson they learned from. Yeah, they kind of learned from. Each other um, also, Arlo's siblings, yeah. I think, are really interesting. They're great and, and are often overlooked. Yeah, they have kind of the traits of either of their parents, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Arlo's very much True. in the middle. Right. Right. You know? Exactly. So. Yeah, it could have been called the courageous dinosaur. 
uh, yeah. given an alternate title. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a good movie. Good mm, dinosaur mm, is the good mm. movie. Good, um, good dinosaur. So, yeah. What's your number ten? My number ten is Soul. Soul. Soul made my top ten. Wow, that's great. I'm so glad it did. Absolutely, it had yeah. to at least make my top ten. Yeah. Thinking about it even more and going back and watching it more. Mm. It keeps going higher in my mind. Yeah. So well written. It is. So it's just such an such a beautiful movie. Yeah. Um, about just about life and enjoying life and mm-hmm. and not being so caught up in in your work and yeah. and then your your. Yeah. It's just the and, the monotony of life and and yeah, and overlooking what's what's right all around you, you yes. and and focusing on your goals yes life being just a series of goals right if i get this i get to do this right. if i get this then this and this right. Right. and it becomes like a video game levels <laughs> and you have to like accomplish things yes. and it becomes completely sterile and stale yeah. Yeah. and this movie has so much vibrance and mm-hmm. and life well and yeah soul. the whole the whole thing with 22 discovering life mm-hmm. and what it's all about and like all this amazing stuff that he just takes for granted mm-hmm. that we all take for granted yeah yeah that's such a powerful uh the, the way they visualize it and the way they they tell the story is so powerfully and you know wonderfully done yeah we'll, we'll talk about more about it in a second mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. we'll move on to my number nine which is toy story Mine is also Toy really? Story. Really? That's your number nine? Yeah. Really? Okay, That's wow. That's my number nine. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Um, Funny. I thought this one was going to be way higher, um, but reassessing and relooking at all of it, it, it's hard to say. This is my least favorite <laughs> Toy Story movie. I mean, I, but just looking at... The thing is, they get better. That's the thing. You know? It's like you, you look at all of them and you see how the characters progress mm-hmm. and where they end up going and what they end up doing and how they tell these stories and you know, just on a visual level, not just the animation. I mean, obviously the animation is, it's the first Pixar movie. It's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the first fully 3D full animated s- film ever made. Yeah, it's, in, it's an incredible groundbreaking moment in cinema, but th- there's nothing negative to say about it. I mean, it, it's, well, it's really, to me, is. I mean, to I me, think there is. To but me, yeah, but to right, me, right. it's like the original Star Wars. It's like criticizing that almost. It's like, okay, this groundbreaking moment that yeah. was so new yeah. and unique and different. And that right. set up the studio, mm-hmm. which, by the way, George Lucas created Pixar. I know. Not a lot of people it's know that. Lucas film thing. All goes back to George. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those movies that I can watch anytime. Always have fun watching it. Mm-hmm. Funny, enjoyable, emotional, engaging, entertaining, well-paced, great music. We got to mm-hmm. talk about Randy Newman. We haven't talked about him yet. The voice of Pixar. He's a genius songwriter. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just very simple. You know, that's the thing about Randy it's, Newman. It's, it's like it's absurdly simple. It's, yeah, it's like it's, it's almost funny how simple it's it is. almost. Yeah, it's almost too simple. Like when you <laughs> if he would if he had come to you with that idea, you'd be like, no, Randy, that that's too simple. Randy, that's we're making, too on we're, the news. Randy, Randy, right. we're making a bug movie. Right. It's about yeah, bugs. Right. Write us a song. Right. Once just a bug. Just a bug. bug. Just a bug. bug. <laughs> it's like, it's like Randy, really? are you actually writing or are you just like are you playing? Just, it's like he just came up with that off the top of his head, but it's so iconic. He's What's so great about Randy Newman is yeah. he's a kid. Totally. He has the mind totally. of a child. Totally. He That's writes what's his, great about all these directors like kid. too. All these storytellers are that way. They can, they can tap into it. that yeah. childlike, yeah. just simple, mm-hmm. but wonderful kind of thing yeah. that they just yeah. have. Yeah. And so, yeah, the original Toy Story, perfect buddy film. It's Woody's arc, you know, is is great. I mean, to me, all the Toy Story films are about Woody, especially when you look at them in sure. all in context yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Buzz has a great role and he he's essential part of, of the Toy Story. Right. But it's all Woody to me. It's it's Woody's journey of jealousy, interesting, and learning about you know how to yeah, yeah. have the role that he had, which is this leadership role in this room, mm-hmm. but now make room for a new toy, and you know learning a new favorite toy, which right. has never happened to Woody before. Exactly, it's a big learning curve for him. Yeah, it's easy to say once you're in a position of sort of privilege, right? That oh, 
I don't really care that I'm the favorite door. Right. It doesn't really matter to me. Exactly. But once it's taken away from you, you're yeah. like, Uh-oh. I am angry yeah. and I hate this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. He's kind of the villain of the movie. In a way. In a way he is. <laughs> yeah. And and but that's what's great is their whole they have to work together. And you know, after this huge mistake Woody makes. I mean, mm-hmm. just a bad decision he makes um, of throwing him out the window uh having to get him back realizing that was wrong having to get back and everything and the whole journey they go on in sid's room Mm -hmm. those Mm -hmm. iconic moments of all those you know creepy toys crawling out that you know scarred me for life oh yeah (laughs) Um, Yeah, they're cannibals yeah right yeah (laughs) use your karate chop action (laughs) so quotable i saw someone someone talk about toy story and they're like now i have to talk to my kid about what cannibals are right exactly yeah exactly so yeah sid is a great bad guy the whole gang, I mean, Rex and Ham and Potato Head, like the voice cast is great. Their dialogue is great. It's so iconic and Slinky. memorable. Slinky, Slinky, I think dogs. Slinky, might be my Slinky favorite dog is great. I've always liked Slinky. Love Slinky. Um, um, anyways. So anyways, Toy Story, the original classic, it's great. <laughs> same thing. We just said yeah. the same thing. I know. I know. Anyways. What's your number nine? My number nine is Toy Story. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, we so we're both it. talking about it. My so number, anything else my, to mention about it? Um. I mean, uh, okay, so everyone knows I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to tarnish we, Toy Story's legacy. It's a brilliant film. Right. It did a thing no one did. Right. But now that 3D movie, 3D animation is a thing. Sure. It's all we have, and we have yeah. no 2D stuff anymore. It is sad. Since 2011, yeah. Disney hasn't made a 2D animated. Yeah, you're right. 2011 was Winnie the Pooh. What are we like? Why? Yeah, it's it's kind of disappointing. It is. I agree. I agree. We, there should be room for both, and that's something that it did. That was. I don't think it intended to do at all. I don't think so either. No, it, it, it was just they were just trying to push the technology forward and, and do this did. new thing, and they, they did. did, and it worked. And it the only trouble, on. the only trouble, is how we handle the technology we're given. Correct. It's been overused. At this point, we're completely oversaturated. It's every every animated film. It's not just Pixar. It's Disney. It's DreamWorks. It's Skydance. It's Sony. Yeah. You know, Sky, Blue Sky. Everyone. Yeah. And, and people is, have done is, amazing but, things with it. Like Into the Spider Verse. Right. I took was, that idea and totally did something about completely to different. That. They did something unique with mm-hmm. it, and it doesn't look like every other 3D animated. Film. Right. Right. So except for DreamWorks, most of those 3D animated movies right. look the same. Exactly. Exactly. I guess a negative you could put on it, but again, it's not the movie's fault. No, it's, no, it's, it's everyone else's fault. fault. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the way they used it. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so, so my, number eight. Yeah, my your eight, eight. My eight. Well, I've been going first. You just did your nine, and then you said your nine. It was the, the same. same thing. So you can do your. Okay, eight. so my number eight is A Bug's Life. Okay. A Bug's Life. It is genius. It is a movie I can always watch and never get tired of. It's one of these movies that. Has so much going on under the surface that I never caught until I got older. The whole power of the majority thing, you know, it kind of gets very political mm-hmm. when Hopper's talking about those ants outnumber us 100 to 1. If they found that out, there goes our way of life. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. very political and has a great uh, message about, you know, ingenuity. You mm-hmm. know, Flick is an inventor. He doesn't give up on that, mm-hmm. even when he's derided for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Seven Samurai. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's totally that whole idea of, um, you know, a ragtag group was brought together and they don't really know what they're doing, but they're going to stand up to these, you know, this bigger force that they've right. got to defend this town. And it's exactly the same. Um, yeah, it's it's literally a, a remake. Which has been done a hundred million. Magnificent million times, Seven yeah. has done it. I'm sure it's I'm sure Seven Samurai wasn't the first to tell that story. I think it, well, I don't know. On film, I'm pretty sure. It was, On film, but, sure. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure that was around, but. Yeah, that whole idea, again, the Randy Newman music is great. Voice cast is excellent. Very quotable. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Fast paced. Uh, Yeah, just thoroughly enjoyable. We we talked about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I like like the bugs I thought. Go for uh, your number eight. My number eight (laughs) is Toy Story 4 okay okay interesting so you've got the toy story movies all all mixed up uh, all over the place interesting okay yeah. cool, cool so, so toy, toy story, story 4, 4 what do you think about it toy story 4 is maybe the best looking pixar movie we've ever had it yeah. is it is yeah. like I, I on, would, a, on another level compared agree. to anything else yeah it's up there with good dinosaur as far as visual just like incredible looking just cinematography exactly like, yeah, like yeah. not like yeah. not even not, so far as just making it look real but right, making it right. 
look cinematic mm-hmm. in the way that they use the focus and the lenses and like all the that lighting stuff. is incredible the yeah, lighting, it's, yeah it's um it's on another level they've really taken this is this is an example of taking 3d animation mm-hmm. and taking all the right lessons from it yep and advancing the technology while using it in a way that's going to tell the best story you can right right um, exactly they they utilize so many live action camera techniques in this movie yeah it's really awesome and it impressive. is incredible um and anyways just beyond technically yeah the story is great story is which great. none of us were expecting we were all expecting yeah. this to be a toy story four what well, the movie, I mean, it's over yeah this is what these these three movies were all about andy right and now you're doing another one we don't care about bonnie right you know yeah that's, that's that's true that's that was, what we were going was, into yeah. the movie expecting yeah, it's true and it's a woody movie yeah. i think honestly you could have called this movie woody right and it'd be all right. the better for it yeah bo peep comes back and i mm. love bo peep she's super cool and fun the cold open with bo peep is great oh man another terrific pixar opening so good that's emotional and intense yeah and the rain looks unlike any mm. other rain i've ever seen yeah. in an animated film right it is it is really something special it is i, I was taken aback at, at how much i enjoyed it mm-hmm. my only criticism is i think buzz is used oddly mm. i okay yeah i yeah, understand yeah. I what we're going with for buzz sure but it seems kind of unnecessary to me mm. mm-hmm. if it had just been woody and forky i would have been f- totally fine with it most of it is <laughs> um, i know most of the movie is yeah. but if, if it had been like Woody gets lost right. completely right. for the whole right. movie. Right. And it's just like him and Forky mostly. Yeah. And the antique shop and mm-hmm. whatever. Um, the, the rest of the cast is yeah. kind of just there. Back in the RV. Um, yeah. They're more important in the beginning of the movie. Right. They have more to say, I think, there. Yeah. But yeah, this is a Woody movie. This is about, this is sure. about Woody um, deciding that there's, there's more to life than just being a toy, having a kid. Yes. You can now give that mm. life experience Woody has yeah. to other toys yeah. and to other kids. Right. And that's really cool. That is cool. That's, that is the perfect finale to Toy Story, I think. I agree. Is Woody learning to give other toys and other kids toy stories of their own, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I like it a lot. Good. My number seven is Toy Story 2. So we already talked a little bit about this one. Okay. But it slightly above Toy Story 1. Just because I think they take everything to the next level where, like you said, they kind of Empire Strikes Back it with two kind of separate storylines. Oh, I'm sorry. Your number eight is what? My number eight is A Bug's Life. My number seven is Toy Story 2. Oh, okay. So Toy Story 2, for all the reasons you said, you know, it has those two storylines. We get a little bit more into Woody. Again, this is another thing where I'm like, this is Woody's story because... The movie opens with that great buzz sequence, right? The video game, mm-hmm. uh, which is excellent. Rex has the best arc in this. He finally defeats Zerg. Rex is great. Yeah, <laughs> like Rex is whole thing. Um, Wallace Shawn is great as well. Rex. But Woody finds out who he is. Mm-hmm. I mean, he finds out where he came from, right? Yeah. And Woody's Roundup, which is so much fun. Why isn't that a Disney Plus show? I don't know. We have um, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, but not on Disney Plus. Yeah, so we need Woody's Roundup on Disney Plus. So his whole thing of finding out he's this highly collectible vintage toy who can spend the rest of his days being admired by thousands of people (laughs) in this museum in Japan with the whole Roundup gang who he meets. Of course, Jesse's backstory we mentioned is great. Uh, Stinky Pete is a great villain. Bullseye's a great sidekick. Mm -hmm. And all the merchandise there is great. And I, I love know, the show was canceled yeah, and all that. Yeah, all that. So much fun. I love Buzz's tough love to Woody. Yeah, it's you great. Spend the rest of your life behind glass. Right. Some life. Right. It's great. It's great so, because well, he tells him what Woody told Buzz in the first film that Woody's yeah. now forgotten mm-hmm. because he's caught up in this whole idea of I'm this great toy now, and Buzz is like, no, you're not being going to be loved by a kid. That's mm-hmm. the only life worth living. You know, it's great. Buzz's whole journey it's, of finding yeah. Woody and all yeah. the antics there and uh, crossing the street, that sequence, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. inside Al's toy barn, he meets yeah. the other Buzz yeah. and yeah. Yeah. the Barbie and all that stuff was really well yeah. done and Very super fun. fun, funny. It's a little bit like Soul in some ways mm. because it's kind of about 
a character who finds that he has value mm -hmm. but not in the way he thinks well he should be well valued. he does actually because so woody initially in the movie doesn't feel worthless he, he's happy generally Right. Yeah, right. But the whole inciting incident is he gets ripped. He gets ripped yeah. and is now and in like, fear of being forgotten. Right. right. He's like, I'm going to go to the garage sale right. or I'm going to get thrown to get out. Fixed. I need to get the thing, just like right. how Joe and Soul needs to get the thing. Yeah. And now Woody's being told monetarily, you are valuable. You have value. Correct. Now. But and it's he's not... starting to see yeah. that as his new purpose. Right, right. Is that not... how I'm valuable yeah. now? I'm not, was... I'm not useful to Andy anymore. Yes. You know? And yeah. then it's through Buzz and Joe through 22 that he realizes the value of the journey he's, he's been through mm -hmm. and his new his purpose. And right. I just thought it was interesting. It is. It was very interesting. Very well. Yeah, it's good. It's a great story. Again, the emotional Jesse moment with Emily. The, uh, the final sequence at the airport mm -hmm. to me has always been one of the most fun, exciting Pixar sequences ever. The whole idea of toys figuring out how to drive a car. Yeah, yeah. The Pizza Planet truck, which comes back. Um, <laughs> him getting on Bullseye and just riding mm. to catch Jesse. Yeah. I mean, that is just such an exciting sequence. Yeah. What's a cowboy without his hat? Yeah. You know, I mean, Pixar. The, you Pixar know, has... you have to trust me, yeah, Jesse. Yeah, and, yeah, right, right. Oh man, it's so fun. Pixar does such a great job with kid fan service. Yes. And that as a kid, I always wondered, where does my luggage go? Right. What does all that room? Yes. What does that room look yes. like? Exactly. And the idea that it's this conveyor belt factory oh, of all these it. like interconnected. Like, that's such a cool idea. It is such a cool idea. You know, as a kid, it you just, want to know all that stuff. And again, as a kid playing with toys, you think about like, okay, if this toy was alive he, and got he out into jump, the world, yeah, he'd and jump on that. How would he? Yeah. How would he get up climb here up on and, my bed? And yeah, yeah. Man, it's just <laughs> so. It's just fantasy. Right? It is. It's yeah, just it's, pure it's, fantasy. Like I said, kid fan service. So um, that was my number seven, seven, right? So what is your number seven? My number seven is Luca. Wow. You have this one way high. High praise for Luca. Very high. Okay. So let's Luca, get into the depths. Luca has the with depths. Luca. <laughs> um, Luca has become one of my most comforting films. Okay. That's great. When I watch Luca. Yeah. I am instantly put at ease. Right. It's very calming. So relaxing. Relaxing, like just and cool, chill. Just so funny. And, it's, and very funny. it's a very witty movie. It has a very witty sense of humor. It does. It does. With It's just so cool it to is. watch. And yeah. visually, the characters' designs are yes. terrific. I like what they did with the sea monster. Strong look. silhouettes yeah. and... and just big eyes and big mm -hmm. personalities. Or no eyes with Massimo. Or no eyes, yes. <laughs> Eyebrows <laughs> right. and a mustache yeah. is this whole face. I yeah. love it. It's so good. It's so cute looking. Yeah. It feels so small. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, very, it's very small. It's and very intimate. hometown. It's literally like a, like a little <laughs> tiny plaza yeah the location the whole movie there are like maybe five locations in the not yeah i mean it's really one I yeah mean, it's bare, it's yeah, like, yeah there's the little tree over here they go right, to there's right. the little plaza mm -hmm. with the fountain and then there's the sea and then i guess they have that triathlon mm -hmm. thing which i mm -hmm. like the triathlon sequence a lot yeah the most well right it's i mean the kind of tension that comes from the movie is mm -hmm. this they're building Don't let them know it. we're sea monsters, you know, and right. it's fun. Right. It's funny. But, but they're also building to this triathlon thing. Right. Right. Which you're like, right. okay, they got to get this Vespa, you yeah, know, and yeah. has a great villain. Yeah. Yeah. He's a really has fun it, villain. It, a He's fun a really villain. nasty kid. I really uh -huh, don't like uh -huh. him. <laughs> yeah. You know? you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very unlikable character, um, but he's a kid, you know. He's, a, he's he is he's he is a kid. yeah. But I'm just saying, I really don't big, like. Him. Yeah, he has such a big ego, definitely, and thinks so highly of himself. Correct, it's so Correct. great, right? So much fun to watch. Yeah, it's so good. visually great, such an easy movie, great. such yeah. an easy movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's fun. Power of friendship. Power of friendship. About. There's nothing like it, about. man. Yeah. My number six. Number six. Soul. Okay. I have soul at number six. It was. It was good. Yeah. Good. It was always up high, really high. Yeah. Soul is just a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. So meaningful. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the deep, <laughs> uh, you know, themes that we've already discussed. You know, Pete Doctor. Pete Doctor. He's, he's doctor is best. in. The Doctor is in. Exactly. The house. Yes. And this was one that we were 
I mean, I was, I remember being very worried about like one of those that I was like, this is so ambitious. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I would, I would actually probably say it is their most ambitious movie. I mean, dealing with the afterlife and that kind definitely, of stuff. Definitely in terms of heavy subject matter. Yeah. Yeah. For sure is. And the way they did it, the way they visualized it, again, they're just so inventive with everything that they did with 22 and with uh, Terry and yeah. all that. Uh, yeah. I thought it was just so creative and funny. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, the fact that Joe is a cat for most of the movie i just things that i just didn't see coming yeah, you know yeah. uh -huh. that they did so well and yeah the jazz element i'm you know uh big into music and, and jazz music is so so creative it's 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 like the most creative musical genre because um well, I what, just, however i just, watched, playing I just watched la la land just today exactly and it's perfect like, watch there's a there's a brilliant watch, perfect double feature yeah there's a brilliant <laughs> explanation of what jazz is in yeah, that movie yeah and he's like, it's different every time. Yeah. Exactly. You come to the same place, you hear the right. same stuff. Right. But this is different every time yeah. you hear it, no matter what they're playing. Exactly. Because someone will just hijack the, the song. I know. And just start yeah. playing, you know, whatever he wants to play. It's so cool. Uh, it is great. It is it is excellent. And and that's kind of what the whole movie um, kind of talks about is mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know. Improvisation. Uh, improvisation, you know. Not, and, it's so interesting, Joe, as a, as a, as a character. He is. Because he's he's preaching jazz right and but he's not, not living, living jazz. exactly he's exactly. living standard mundane routine, life get and, to your goal hit your marks right right and and that whole idea of you have these dreams and that's great to have dreams but not letting your dreams become your obsession okay and um <laughs> i thought you were gonna go shia labeouf on us for a second <laughs> don't let <laughs> your dreams just, just be dreams, dreams. Well, that's in it too, but I feel like the movie <laughs> is talking more about how he, he's kind of so obsessed with making it big. Ambition, yeah. That he's missing out on his his teaching mm -hmm. life, his teaching mm -hmm. career of totally. investing in these kids yeah. and, you know, everything yeah. that he has going for him. His barber, who he never talks yeah. to about, yeah. like, his life and the yeah. barber's life. And mm -hmm. he's always just about jazz, his dreams yeah. of what he wants to do and yeah it's, it's just great so cool. him getting his dream and getting his goal mm -hmm. and that not being the end of the movie like yeah i've heard um jamie fox who plays joe Gardner yeah. in the film talk mm -hmm. about that he's like that would have been the end of the movie in most movies mm -hmm. it's like about you know just getting to your dreams and accomplishing your goals but that's not what this movie is it's yeah. like yeah that's not what life is about it's about living life for the moment mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. missing out on what you have in front of you so yeah. it's just great it's just a great bio digital film. jazz man <laughs> um great voice cast too and soul that i really like yeah i mentioned jamie fox but Tina i, I was then. leery when i heard jamie fox was gonna be in it yeah, he's such a i don't like voice. i don't like the idea of i guess that's not true because they all have big name actors in them but <laughs> when chris pratt and tom holland were cast right. and onward, i'm like yeah. here we go all the big right. guys are gonna be in right. all the pixar right. movies and Doesn't he did a terrific that. job terrific. right what's your number six my number six is Finding Nemo. Mm, of course. Finding I should Nemo. have seen it coming. Finding Nemo. Knew it was going to be really high. Nemo. Mm. <laughs> Nemo's kind of like Luca to me a little bit in some ways. Comfort movie. Yeah, very yeah. comforting. Mm -hmm. Very relaxing. But mm -hmm. much more emotional than yes. Luca is. Much more yes. intimate. Well, not really necessarily intimate, but much more much more impactful yeah, I mean, it's emotionally. A grand, it's a grand scale they're telling the story on, but it is very marlin focused mm -hmm, i feel mm -hmm. like yeah it is marlon focused yeah we go to so many beautiful looking places in this mm -hmm. movie the ocean yeah. is a vast like galaxy yeah of right. new worlds right it is and this movie understands that and yeah. shows us so much right it's really really amazing and it's split into into two kind of subplots mm -hmm. of, of marlon and nemo mm -hmm. and they both have very compelling arcs yep is kind of overcoming your your own disability and being mm -hmm. able to have confidence in yourself yes. and be able to because he's been held back right right for and, so and long. It, yeah it kind of goes hand in hand with marlon's art right which is to rely on other people and yeah. and trust those you love and mm -hmm. you know it's very cool it's it's such a good movie and it's so much fun to watch mm. it's one of those movies i can just watch yeah they don't have to do anything they don't have to say anything yeah. I just want to watch it. You yeah, know? yeah. You can yeah. turn this, even though the soundtrack is incredible. Oh, sure. sure it's sure. very 
spacey and yeah. and lofty and and yeah. just gorgeous scenery gorgeous yeah. visuals yeah the visuals really do stand out in that film they mm-hmm. really do mm-hmm. yeah and the characters of i remember mom always wanting to have this on just on she, just, she just never had us. any problem with me yeah. constantly watching me <laughs> though she, she asked for it sometimes it. she did she still does I yeah think. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's one of those really just pretty looking movies yeah so many terrific side characters yep bruce as the vegetarian shark such a brilliant his, idea his vegetarian Shaman support anchor. group yeah so good fisher friends not food right and then him turning into that just like yeah. savage Gets crazy of the blood. scary black-eyed monster yeah. mm-hmm. and you know why they named him bruce right because of the shark from jaws yes yeah. that was the nickname of the shark on jaws. <laughs> um crush of course yeah the crush the sea turtle the surfing sea turtle the and squirt the exact opposite of marlin and yes. nemo they're absolutely. total opposite absolutely yeah no, he, that's actually a major moment for Marlon. Big time. Yeah. How do you, but, but, but dude, how do right. you know when they're yeah. ready? Yeah. When they, you, you don't know, know, when you, you know, know dude. You know? Choo choo <laughs> Find your way back. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. It's excellent. It's real, every character has an effect on him. And uh, no Marlon's whole responsibility yeah. throughout the film mm. of his failure in the beginning. Right. And the just devastation that comes from that yeah and then constantly putting everything that goes wrong on himself throughout yeah. the film yeah Every, especially pairing him with with dory right he's right. constantly <laughs> he's the kind of a parent who's constantly with a disabled person yeah. and he's constantly having to deal with them and and right. to not be so overprotective and fearful over them right you know right. and to kind of allow them to trust themselves and to, yeah. to do their own stuff and right him being with dory specifically mm-hmm. teaches him a lot about being with nemo sure, sure i think it's really important that it was dory that right. he was stuck with the whole of course time. and when dory gets hurt in the yeah. in the jellyfish thing mm-hmm. he's just devastated right. and he's almost like about to lose it and, and yeah. she's okay and she's yeah. playing around and, right right and then he has that great sea turtle moment. Yeah. It's just it culminates in this really cool, emotional, well-rounded story yep. that doesn't feel its length, mm-hmm. even though it's not really very long. Right. Every scene is important in that movie. Every yep. everything comes back and matters. Mm-hmm. And the tank gang we talked about. Yes. Willem Dafoe in a Pixar movie so is such a cool thing. It is. So I love it. I love Nemo. Yep. Cool. I love Nemo. It's another great buddy movie, like all their a lot of them are buddy movies. That's mm-hmm. kind of the Pixar mm-hmm. formula, if yeah. you will. Um, on a number five, Up. Whoa. Yep. Up made the top five. Up is up there. Up is all the way up there because <laughs> it's we were, we just great. It's we're, just, we're we did. We're going to keep making it. <laughs> it's so good. Like you said, the opening 10 minutes alone would have been the best and it short. It would have been their best short. But what, what's great about that is Carl and Ellie and Ellie kind of turning Carl into this wilderness explorer yeah. in a way yeah more, you know like more outgoing a, an person. outgoing adventurous yeah. person she was that he very much was not that mm-hmm. their relationship is just great I, I also really am a huge fan of classic adventure like you know definitely um, very indie indiana jones rocketeer the phantom mm-hmm. the, the phantom, shadow yeah, the phantom. uh sky captain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the mummy yeah, very, you know all very these pulpy. all these pulpy you know flash gordon all those pulpy yeah. adventure classic adventure stuff from like the 30s and 40s i'm a huge sucker for so mm-hmm. this very much has that kind of like framing right of carl munch sure yeah is that kind of guy mm-hmm. he's out mm-hmm. there exploring he's got this kind of technology that no one else has and yeah yeah he's out there doing his thing and you know they both look up to him that whole thing really hooks me like really hooks me mm-hmm. into the film and you tell the story with Carl where since Ellie passed, he's basically given up on life. He's given up on his dreams, their goals, their adventures that they were going to have together. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. And in comes Russell, right? Yeah, and Russell yeah. is the catalyst through which he can now have those adventures mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that he never got to have. Right. Um, I'm kind of just getting emotional thinking about it. Yeah, that's really Uh, really cool. It's a really, really engaging, interesting, fun story. Mm -hmm. And that's very Mm character-centric, emotional, (laughs) exciting, engaging, and in a way that, to me, few other films are. And it's because of that framing of the the 10-minute short of, here's this guy, here's who he was, here's who he was going to be, 
you can like see where they're going mm-hmm. and then it takes a turn. Their relationship develops very naturally, him and Russell, the visual storytelling of the balloons, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, just a kind of ridiculous thing that obviously, you know, it's fantastical, but it's such a great visual that I would have it no other way. You know, it's just such a great look of he's taking off on this adventure. He, mm-hmm. He's his spirit is back in right, a way right. like he's mm-hmm. he's come back and you know, so long, boys. I yeah, love that yeah, line. That yeah. line reading by Ed Asner is so perfect. The way oh, he Ed plays Asner. the character, mm. it, it, it's like few other voice acting performances I've ever heard. You know, like you said, Carl Munz is a great villain and it has Doug and uh, Kevin, uh, who's another like great Kevin, character yeah, that yeah. I really like. Yeah. Kevin's that other kind of like parent figure yes. idea, that whole like yes yeah right it's cool and so you know the whole thesis of the film basically is keep on living don't ever give up on life no matter how old you are right because at this point carl is like way past his prime like he shouldn't be going on this adventure his doctor would not advise this but it's the whole idea of even though you're getting older even though you're not as strong as you were Mm -hmm. even though Mm -hmm. you're not as quick as you once were you can still have an impact on the world you Mm -hmm. can still Mm -hmm do things you can still go on adventures and do um amazing things that you never thought possible Mm -hmm. yeah uh so i just adore this story so much Mm -hmm. and to me it never loses its luster after those first 10 minutes we get that kind of like that low point right Mm -hmm. russell comes into the story and we're like okay what's going on here and there's a little back and forth And then once those balloons and they take off, it does not stop. To me, it is just this fast paced adventure that is so much fun. Uh, The aerial sequences are great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last thing I'll mention is the music, which really sells the whole thing. The Mm -hmm. first 10 minutes is all music pretty much. I think there's like a little bit of dialogue with him and young Ellie. Yeah. And they meet. Um, I think it's just Ellie that talks, actually. I don't think. Carl, young no, Carl, young Carl never speaks, um, which is so except cool. for Wow, he says Wow, right, right, right. That's right. Um, but that music by Jacino, he just nails it and creates the one of the most moving, emotional movie scores I think maybe ever produced. I mean, it's truly, no, it's, tr- it's truly on that level. I for know, me. I know. Uh, just the theme, <laughs> but plus everything else he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think the ending totally works. And yeah, I really like how it ends. I think, it, I think it's a great moment to end on. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of, we get kind of like a montage with the credits, which I think right, is great too. Right, yeah, yeah the uh, the kind of, continue. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that it, it's open ended. Right, right. Um, right. It kind of has that like. Yeah, I mean that's part of that's part of the exact story. The whole is, idea yeah. is it never ends. Mm-hmm. So that's my number five. Uh, it honestly, now that I'm talking about it, I kind of want to put it up even <laughs> higher. Uh, but what's your number five? My number five is Monsters Inc. Pick. can't get enough monsters inc yeah, dude i good. love monsters inc it's, it's bio digital <laughs> jazz man is that gonna be every <laughs> movie is gonna have that well, this movie just has jazz dude that's true there's that's true. so yeah, that's a good much point. jazz that's a good point. in this movie yeah other than Wouldn't soul have no yeah other than have. soul this is the most jazz filled pixar movie um so right. that's the last time i'll make the bio digital <laughs> jazz joke but um most people don't even know what that is <laughs> You're like, what is he even talking about? Watch Tron Legacy, you'll get it. Tron Legacy is great. Yeah. Okay, so Monsters Inc. Yeah. I've another one I've seen countless times mm. is so funny. The comedy of the movie is so well timed. Yes. Mike yes. is such a great comedian totally. throughout the film. Totally. His jokes always land. Yeah. Everything is so his visual comedy and his yes. his physical stuff is always great. Yes. And Sully is this mm. big monster bear who has the, the heart of a kitten. <laughs> yes. He really does. He has the heart of a kitten. And Mike has such a short temper. Right. And them kind of living and working together is so much fun. They're the perfect buddy pair. Totally they really perfect. complete each other. I think, honestly, I think they work better than was and Buddy. Or was and Buddy. Yeah, I mean, wow. Woody... <laughs> Woods and Buddy. So this is your own alternate reality, like the dark mirror dimension version of Woody and Buzz. Yes, yes. Interesting. Okay. Woods and okay. Buddy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Buzz, then Buzz and Woody. 
I prefer uh, Mike and Sully. Um, right. And this movie is really about about Boo mm. and and Sully. And the way Boo. she has an effect on both of them, right? Their relationship, right? Changes their whole world, their right. whole perspective on mm-hmm. uh, their lives and, mm-hmm. and their livelihoods and what what everything even is. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's just it's very emotional mm-hmm. in that sense. Mm-hmm. The, again, the music is spectacular. Yeah. The world building is so interesting too. Mm-hmm such a great silly idea it is for, for as funny as a movie as it is it's yeah. it has really scary frightening moments yeah. and that, we talked about randall and how, how randall's great yes yes um randall has his own foil in the form of fungus i love fungus. right, right. yeah oh yeah his, fungus like, is like anti-mike totally where he has like many eyes right right and he's small and like mike is yeah. he's a primary color it's but great he's, and he's just like nervous he's all the, the time. total he's opposite like, of mike yeah. mike is all confidence all right. suave right. fungus is all skill and technicality <laughs> right. and he has no confidence totally it's great it's great it's and then randall's that the opposite of super skinny of, yeah, super opposite slick. Of sully yeah they're both super conniving yeah, i never picked up on that very totally selfish did. yeah they're the black mirrors of each other yep. but, um yeah i love monsters Inc. good that's a good number five uh, my number four is toy story three okay super exciting how are they going to close this trilogy and saw it in the theater vividly remember seeing it pure joy of that opening scene of seeing what andy's seeing in his head basically yeah while he's playing with these toys yeah it was so much fun to see. I could watch a whole movie that way. Going from that to Andy's grown up. I think he was the same age I was because uh, I yeah, was 18. I was 18 yeah. when it came out. Yeah. That whole connection I had to Andy and these characters that I had grown up with mm-hmm. made this one of the most emotional Pixar films. It is. That I'd ever I, I, I think it's I think it's definitely and, the most emotional and still is because it really hits it home in mm-hmm. a big way mm-hmm. at the end when uh, he gives his toys to Bonnie right. and uh, right. that sequence is just excellent mm-hmm. but everything in the middle you know works really well too it's a prison break film mm. it's basically the great escape <laughs> yeah, toys. yeah and they do such a great job with that they do such a great job with Lotso and making you like Lotso in the beginning mm-hmm. um, he's a very warm cuddly he's character a, he has a very sympathetic story voiced by Ned Beatty the great Ned, great Otis from Superman, yeah. the original Superman, yeah. Yeah. great, great actor. Yeah, he's got a great backstory. You're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is mm-hmm. super tragic what happened to him and Big Baby. Chuckles is that the, the clown's name? Chuckles, that's right, Chuckles. that's right. Chuckles, yeah, voiced yeah. by uh, Bud Lucky. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, who's who's great? Terrific. Um, he kind of you find out rules this daycare with an iron fist. Mm. You know, as the toys have been. Can I just say? Daycare is a sad, lonely <laughs> place for washed up old toys who have no owner. It's awful. It's a perfect location for a Toy Story yes, movie. Yes, I was really glad they came up with that idea. That was such a unique location. We, I loved seeing the toy store in Toy Story 2, right? Yeah, so, I mean, the places you expect to see toys. Right, is a bedroom, kids' bedroom, a toy, toy store, store, and, and now a daycare. a daycare. So, yeah, it was really fun to see all that, all the new characters. I really liked Ken, Michael Keaton. Again, they brought him back from Cars to Kicks. <laughs> Now he's Ken, a totally different character, and totally different. Does unrecognizable, unrecognizable as as Ken. He he does such a good job in that role. Again, the the just the storytelling, the dialogue, the music, it all works together flawlessly in this movie. There's not a single thing I would change. The of course huge moment mm. when they're in the incinerator. Uh, I mean, just such a gut wrenching, dramatic moment, uh, so gripping. Good. You know, yeah. And then I love that the claw saves them. I love that the the LG it all comes full circle are right there with the claw <laughs> and yeah it was just a great moment they do a great job with each character uh, I feel like again it's very much Woody's story but Buzz has you know Spanish mode which is fun yep. yeah yeah his relationship that's with... an interesting theme throughout Buzz is like communication and right. and language and yeah. the way that he perceives things yeah. and speaks and behaves with other people it's true yeah he's it's always weird. learning I yeah mean, he's he's yeah. like still a, a kind of a young toy. I don't we, know if... we forget that Woody's been around since the 50s. Right. And Buzz has been around for like five, 10 years. But yeah, the whole movie is just yeah. that theme of letting go, mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's okay. It's the to... Toy Story. To me, this is the Toy Story. Right. It's okay to move on and it's okay to, you know, experience new things. They're with a new owner now mm-hmm. and they have new a new bedroom, new toys to interact with. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, with Dolly and Trixie and mm-hmm. Mr. Mm-hmm. Pricklepants. And uh, uh, I love so all of them. I love them. They're all great. Things. All new, all the new characters are excellent and they're all utilized very well. A great ending. It's a great ending to the trilogy. Um, uh, what's your number four? My number four is Ratatouille. Great. Wow. You have this one way high. It's too. very high. It's yeah. almost the top three. Yeah. First of all, it's a Brad Bird film. Right, right. So it's right, terrific. Of course. It's, it's incredibly well directed. The, the, the visual mm-hmm. uh, language of the camera and the way that it mm-hmm. moves in, in certain positions is is really impressive. Yeah. Um, it's it's set in a, a very unique location yeah. in Paris, France. Right. But even more unique is its perspective mm. of a rat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you take this city of Paris, which in any other film would be this grand beautiful place mm-hmm. that where everyone is is <laughs> fancy and yeah. and you're fancy and whatever right from the perspective of a rat the most hated creature yes especially in paris exactly exactly and <laughs> the whole city's out to get you yeah and everyone hates you right and you're eating garbage but Patton oswald loves art exactly and Patton oswald as remy by the way yeah i wasn't expecting him to be that great Great, but a great just performance, just really, really good. You wouldn't expect someone like Patton Oswald yeah. to do something like that. Out of the box casting choice, but just perfect. So good, yeah. so good. Yeah. So Remy has just such a such a taste for art, such such a such an expansive palette compared right. to the people he's around. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's that kind of he's sort of the outsider, and that yeah. he wants to experience new things and loves art and creating mm-hmm. and doesn't want to take he wants to give right and, and make something new and his relationship with Linguini yes is very interesting because it's it's not like any other Pixar buddy relationship mm-hmm. it's not a it's not a Woody and Buzz thing it's not a Mike and Sully thing yeah it is this symbiotic <laughs> it's al- it's almost parasitic in yeah, some in some situation. ways, yeah, that's true. That's because you get to apt. Linguini is is this garbage boy. Yeah, um, can't cook. Can't cook. But he hails from bad a cook. at cooking <laughs> and has no confidence in himself. Yeah, doesn't believe he can do anything right. Right. Finds Remy. I mean, is crazy, <laughs> and yeah. it's like it's such a funny, great <laughs> situation. Yeah, and they so smartly make it so that Remy can't actually speak. Yeah. We just, we understand what he's saying. But right, right, right. Linguini can't talk to Remy yes. and Remy can't talk back, you yes, know? Yes, exactly. It's great. Um, yeah. But yeah, they have this thing where now Remy can make Linguini a good chef. Right. And now Remy can create the things he wants to create. Yeah, And, exactly. and express himself through his, exactly. his food. Yeah. They both get what they want. Right. But they don't care about each other. They don't think of each other as right. people. Yep. They think of them as the means to get the yeah, thing that I want, yeah. right? So once they get it, mm-hmm. once Remy has the means to create his art, yeah. he doesn't care about what the sous chef is telling him to do. Sure. He doesn't care about his family anymore. Yeah. He cares about Linguini is giving him this ability mm. to create and he's doing it. Linguini, once he becomes successful, mm. doesn't care about Remy because now yeah. I get the things all I wanted. And Colette's get, there. And Colette's yeah. there. And I get Colette. Right. And yeah. and forget Remy. I don't care about the rat. Yeah. I, the rat does nothing for me. And then mm. they're both at their lowest point. Right. Remy goes back to his family. Mm-hmm. Learns that humans kill rats all the time. And that they hate rats. And that they're the worst. Right. Right. And if you stay with Linguini, mm. you're probably going to die. Yeah. And Linguini learns, I have no skill. Right. I can't do anything. I'm, right. I'm like, none of this has been me. Yeah. At the end of the movie, he becomes a waiter yeah. at his own restaurant. That's right. That's right. And that's brilliant because yeah. that's totally his skill. Totally. He's a great, he's great at being with people and right. he's great at juggling things. Mm-hmm. And anyways, it's just a terrific arc that they all go through yeah. and the color yeah. and the texture of the food. Oh yeah. I can yeah. almost smell this movie. It's so appetizing. Just beautiful <laughs> movie. And one of the one of those food movies, like yeah. the movie Chef. John yeah, Favre's yeah, movie yeah. Chef. Yeah. Or one of my wife's um, favorites, uh, Julie and Julia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that yet. Um, that you have to eat something while you're eating, while you're exactly. watching it or, yes. or afterwards. You're very hungry. I'm getting hungry just thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So under our number threes, my number three is The Incredibles. That is my number three favorite Pixar film. Top three. I mean, these are all actually starting with Toy Story 3. They're all five stars. They're all, in my opinion, perfect films. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, The Incredibles, it's just one of the great comic book superhero movies, not about comic book superheroes. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is, but yeah, it isn't, yeah, right? I a, mean, it's, it's, a, it's all about it's a superhero family. film, right? It's all about family. Um, that's what's so powerful about it. That's what's it. so powerful about it. And so Brad Bird crafts a movie that is exciting, that is emotional, hilarious, and full of incredible set pieces and with also extremely relatable characters. The characters are so relatable. It's like you just have to laugh because of some of the just conversations they're having that are so like... This it's is the most mundane is, superhero. I know, I know, right? You know what I mean? This is the single, first of all, it's the single most quotable movie I think I've ever seen. Okay. Okay. I yeah, don't think there's there. I don't think there. there's any movie I actually quote more than this <laughs> right, movie. Right. I will recite whole know, scenes yeah. of dialogue. I know, from this film. I know, you do often. This this movie, Brad Bird makes a decision. And this is all I'll say for now. Yeah. But because I know yeah. this is your thing. But yeah. he makes a decision at the beginning of the movie to open with an interview with the superheroes right right right, right. and he's like i Very wanted cool. to start the movie soft and slow yeah to get to know our personalities first yes who are these yes. characters what do they want right what are they after how do they see the world right. how do they see themselves right and then we're into the waymo blamo stuff right right then right. we're into this awesome car right. chase yes exactly and this movie is so suave and cool it is super cool oh, it is man. it is like a bond level cool <laughs> And it's all set in the 60s with that very much that kind of like Bond aesthetic with like the tech. Mm -hmm. It's very like retro, mm -hmm. the whole look of it. And yeah, super well paced. All the characters I like and mm -hmm. care about. Yeah. Um, even Syndrome has a great reason for what he's doing, and I think. They're all in danger in this movie. They're all in danger. There's there's thrills. There's, there's exhilarating <laughs> like action scenes. There's... <laughs> Like I said, great comedy and humor, all character-based, dialogue. And it, it's just, he poured, you can tell he poured himself into this film. 100%. Like, the, he lived and breathed The Incredibles for, I don't know, four years mm -hmm. probably of making this movie. Mm -hmm. The animation is top-notch. The Giacchino score is super, you forgot, this one's super jazzy too. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's firing on all cylinders. One of those movies that every aspect of the production is top notch, top level. The voice acting, Craig T. Nelson as Bob Parr is one of the great superhero performances, movie performances. Yeah, this this had been the only thing I'd seen him in for a very long yeah. time until I saw Poltergeist. Right, and like, oh, he's, of course, he's so Holly Hunter as Helen. I mean, she's an all time Helen Parr, all time great. Again, and and the the choices of the voices like iconic sounding voices that are also great actors right you know um the kids who play dash and violet of course are incredible jason mm -hmm. lee is syndrome so yeah this movie i mean i know you're going to talk about it more um but it is it is a great <laughs> film truly great on every level and i can watch it over and over and over and over and never get tired of it i agree so uh, what's your number three my number three is toy story three. Oh, great okay cool so we so have relatively close, close yeah. to where yours was yeah, right um, this is my favorite Toy Story movie. Great. I think it has so much heart. Yeah. And the the stakes are so high for this movie, mm, I think. True. I genuinely don't know that Woody's going to stay with the group. I seriously oh, right, think that right. they're all going to yeah. leave and gonna that go he's going to have to go. And we're going to lose Woody in this yeah, movie. Right. I yeah. feel that. Mm -hmm. And it, it feels like a genuine possibility. Mm -hmm. And that is a, apparent in the characters' interactions. Yeah. Buzz is kind of betrayed that Woody's going to like, you're not going to stay with us. Like we've been with you the whole time. Right. Andy's abandoned you for years, <laughs> right. even though you were his favorite toy. Right. Um, so it's just, it's so cool that yeah. that kind of, they can bring that tension in. Right. To, and it's interesting. To like that. It's interesting that Woody's real family is Buzz in the gang. Yeah. And he learns that. And he, he thinks that he has to be with Andy, but it's his friends that he yeah. really needs right 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 um yeah it's it's excellent, excellent so story. i love toy story three yeah. um creepy monkey love creepy monkey. oh yes um, so creepy so creepy monkey i love all of the um the sunny side yes. toys yes the purple octopus yes the bug twitch oh yeah he's cool yeah um we already talked about ken he's ken great. great such a big personality yes 
love that Barbie has a big role in this movie. Yeah, yeah. They all the like whole, a character. This yeah. is this movie understands like my complaint about Toy Story 2 is that the gang was disconnected. Right. In three, they're all together. Yeah. And they're true. working yeah, an super well together. Right, right. Everyone's playing to their strengths and doing something that they've never done before. Dude, the Mr. Potato Head tortilla. Mr. Scene. Potato Head. Oh man. Tortilla, <laughs> so cucumber. Good. Mrs. Potato Head, her eye, <laughs> her being eye, the whole yes. time and all that. It's just so the ticking good. clock of the film. Yeah. It's so brilliant. Oh yeah. I mean, it's intense. It's it's beyond genius. It I, I can't. I couldn't even fathom yeah. beginning to to write a story like that. I know. Where everything matters, everything right. comes together, right. and we got to do it all in a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's incredible. incredible. Number yeah. two for me is Toy Story Four. Okay. Toy Story Four. I think this is too is, new for me to put it this high. Yeah, it, basically on first watch, it was <laughs> it was up here because we just talked about Toy Story three, perfect film, perfect ending, didn't need another one. Mm-hmm. Why are they doing another one? Bad idea. When I sat down to watch it, I was shocked because they found a way to conclude Woody's story in an even more satisfying way because they focused on Woody as a character, not in relation to Andy. So you have a story about Woody Mm -hmm. becoming who he needs to be. Basically it's, it's so the way I look at it is Woody is Andy's dad. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Think about it this way. You know, I mean, he even calls him, he's my kid, right? Throughout the whole series. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah he's never moved on from when Andy left. He, he's never really let go and, and um, tried to make a life for himself. Mm-hmm. He's constantly referring to Bonnie as Andy and they're always correcting him. And right. he's, he's right. you know, trying to do things the way he did it with Andy. And they're mm-hmm. like, Bonnie does, is not like that. She, she's not Andy. <laughs> and it's him basically. She doesn't like dusty old cowboys. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, at least not anymore. She loved him in Toy Story 3, but yeah, she's grown yeah. up and she's her tastes have kind of changed or whatever. And, <laughs> you know, she likes Forky now. Forky's the new thing. And Love the whole Forky. idea of, yeah, Forky, you know, and, and him trying to help Forky on his journey. Woody constantly needing a mission mm-hmm. for a kid. But when Bo comes into the story and he realizes she's been on her own this whole time and he now has an opportunity to like I said, kind of just make a life for himself mm-hmm. in a way that he's never even probably thought of before. Their relationship is great. What they did with Bo Peep in this is awesome. I she agree. is such yeah. a cool character mm-hmm. and has such a big impact on Woody. The antique shop, such a great idea. All these antique toys, Gabby Gabby mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, Benson, you know, yeah. super creepy. Yeah. You thought, thought the monkey was creepy? This takes it <laughs> up a notch. I mean, Benson is really a scary yeah. character. Yeah. And when he's chasing them through the antique shop, it just it's so intense. <laughs> You've got Keanu Reeves as um, Duke Kaboom. Yeah. yeah. And all these great new characters that are introduced that are tons of fun. I, I, I get so much enjoyment out of this one. It's one of those that I was so surprised by. Right that I had to put it higher just because of the emotional connection, the excitement, the, we mentioned the animation and the cinematography is stellar. Mm -hmm. The music, everything. This is the ending of this. Again, I didn't think they could top the ending of three and somehow they did because the ending of this movie is so incredibly emotional Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. The, the, the farewell that Woody has with Buzz and the gang mm-hmm. is so intensely yeah. emotional. Yeah. But I love it. And I love the journey he's right, gone on. Right. And I don't, I don't hate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, this is the way it should go. Yeah. Totally. I don't feel like, Great. no, this shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Or this was a bad choice. I feel right, like right. this is, they've earned this. This mm-hmm. is how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how I want them to end it's, it. it's, and I and definitely don't make a Toy Story five. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if they did, it would be like Buzz. I guess. I guess. I don't know. I, I just don't think they should touch it uh, because we got Lamp Life. We got Lamp Life, which was fun, um, but that was kind of like a pre. Yeah, it's mostly pretty cool. Um, um, I like Toy Story four a lot. Yeah, I, I well, you enjoyed talked it about a it ton. Already. Yeah, I talked about it when it was back there. But yeah, yeah it's, it really really recontextualizes the past three. Because we've thought of them as movies about Andy, 
mm-hmm. for since Toy Story Three has been out. Sure. Like, this is all Andy. Sure, it's sure. all Andy's story. Sure. Which mm-hmm. looking it's back, over. it's really not. <laughs> you know, it's just when you can again contextually. Yeah, it's very much Woody's story. Yep. So yeah, what's your uh, number two? My number two is Wally. It's my number one. I know it's your number Wally. one. That's your number one. <laughs> My number one's Incredibles. Yes. So um, let's talk Wally first. Let's talk then Wally. We can first. get into Incredibles. Yeah, Wally. So Wally, here, let me let me start because <laughs> I got to talk about the silence of Wally. Yes. So Wally is one of the most purely visual yes. movies, correct? That I've ever seen. Yes. It it starts out no dialogue for a word spoken. I I don't know, fifteen minutes. He makes noises and maybe says stuff to like a cockroach, but I'm trying to think. I feel like in human until... dialogue. Human dialogue. Oh, that's probably like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah, on. that's because Eve comes up and she talks a little bit. Well, even she doesn't talk because she shuts down. <laughs> there might not be dialogue for like 30 minutes in this movie. I don't know. I need to time it and figure it there's out. There's a little, there's little woes. And... Right. Oh, sure. There's little things, ooh. but. But yeah, this is this is a terrific movie. This is a post-apocalyptic Earth. Yep. Too much garbage in your face. Plenty of space out in space. Right. All, By and large, all the, all the people went off and and cruise ships and, and the stars. So many themes: social themes, political themes. It's all about corporatism. It's probably and greed it's probably and... the most prophetic Pixar film. Yes, I'm pretty uh, sure this is totally, going to be real. Totally. I mean, By um, and Large is Amazon or Disney or both. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, it's yeah, just yeah. this huge corporation that's taken over everything. They run everything. They ran us into the ground because they were so consumed with right, right. consumerism. Um, and this movie has such a great heart. It's such a, such a romantic really film. So it's, um, it's a romance. Yeah, it's definitely it's a, a romance. sci-fi romance. Yeah, it does what Rocky did with sports films. Exactly. And it, it did it with sci-fi. Yes. I love the axiom, the, the design oh, yeah. of the axiom. Cool design. And oh, uh, the whole design the of the technology. whole film is great. The design of Eve is great. Yeah, yeah. And the Eve design is... of Wally and the way he's right. so retro and like grounded. Yeah, Wally Star Wars. And dirty. Wally right. Star Wars. Eve is Star Trek. Exactly. And they're like, one is pristine and clean, Correct. one is like dirty and grindy. Yeah, exactly. And they work so well together. Yeah. And I love just the the detail of the film's amazing. Mm. The cameras mm. in Wally's eyes. The way that yeah. he emotes through his camera lens That's eyes. Great. You can are, see him zoom in and out yeah, and all of it. So cool. We get a lot of POV shots of mm-hmm. robots and, and what they see, different different characters. Um, right. Everything on the Axiom is is fun and, and so fun. And Exciting, all over the place. And and, 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 yeah. Great color, great right, sound. Right. Stark contrast to the, the opening half of the movie. Correct. That's all brown and, and dusty and right. dirty and right. grainy. I could talk about Wally all day. It's super good. It is. So many details um, in where Wally lives, mm-hmm. you know, and all the things that he's collected. Yeah, his love for humanity is what's kind of... Exactly. It's what's him differentiated him right. yeah, from all the other Wallys because right. he's not the only Wally. Mm-hmm. There were thousands or millions of these things all over the planet, but he's the only one that survived because he's transcended <laughs> his, his program yeah, in a yeah, way yeah. because he's, he is connected with humanity in a way. He watches um, Hello, Dolly. Mm-hmm. and um, his relationship with Eve is just great mm-hmm. the, the way they interact Otto is a great villain very HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey Definitely. yeah this one has great music has that great of course Peter Gabriel song at the mm-hmm. end of the credits mm-hmm. and uh, Earth. has a perfect just story of just the structure of it how yep. it flows yeah. the relationships of the characters the other robots they meet the mm-hmm. humans mm-hmm. the captain scarily prophetic and in, <laughs> in its depiction of humanity yeah, it seems yeah. uh, we're heading towards that route. I, li- I like that everything on the axiom looks like it's built for babies to use exactly because yes. the people are just giant like fat baby yeah, people right. they have stubby <laughs> hands and they don't even touch it they don't even handle anything yeah i know yeah it's they just so hit funny. buttons on their little... We have a pool? Yeah. Right. And they don't know. Right. They've been on here their whole lives. Yeah. They're just staring at their screens. 700 years yeah. in space. Yeah. Except to a centennial cupcake in a cup. I know. It's so good. It's so good. It has so many great ideas in it. It's, mm-hmm. of course, it's Andrew Stanton again. Yeah. The guy who did Finding Nemo. Yeah. And he's just a really great visual storyteller and mm-hmm. does a great job in the film. Beautiful film. Beautiful on every level. Uh, visually... I just, love, I just love Wally on the outside of the axiom. Yes. As he's me holding too. onto it and yes. the stars, and he's in space for the first time. Great. His dance with Eve outside. Yes. And yes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous sci fi. It 
It's great. It's Beauty. sci-fi, romance, an underdog story, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is always fun. And, and so, a yeah. rise against the machine story too. Yeah. The machines rising against the other machines. <laughs> uh, my number one Pixar movie, Wally. Wow. It's yeah. the best. And your number one is The Incredibles. Yes. I think The Incredibles, The Incredibles is one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, Wally, same for me. It's in my top. Yeah. Yeah. 20 probably films of all time um, pixar is my favorite in, favorite animation studio of all time maybe yeah. my favorite film studio ever okay um they just they have they have a standard of quality that's they do. remarkable mm-hmm. they push the technology they push the stories they do they're so creative um, and inventive not creative. just with the technology but also with the storytelling right right and you can tell they're all a team yeah just like the incredibles they're a family they all have different skills they have different powers sometimes they disagree sometimes they clash right they work together and they always always make something great they do yeah incredibles to touch on briefly it is as a superhero fan as a kid who grew up with with comic books and cartoons and and superhero stuff all over the place it is my favorite superhero action i've ever seen yeah, the stuff in the jungle is really Everything incredible. in the jungle is awesome. <laughs> Fighting the Omnidroid, yes. the final battle in the city. Yeah. This this has so much stuff I love from comic book stuff that's never right. been done in live action superhero mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. Like the costumes. Edna right. Mode being the costume designer. Right. What an awesome character. Yes. Voiced by Brad Bird, the director right. himself. So crazy. The only one who could do that weird yeah, voice I know. he wanted. It's bizarre. Yeah, just just brilliant. The art of the film mm-hmm. is very geometrical. It's very much right. Brad Bird yeah. style from Iron Giant. And, sure. and it's it's kind of brought into this idealized um style that's very 60s, a very throwback, yep. very suave. Everything's clean, mm-hmm. everything's cool. Mm-hmm. Syndrome's technology on a Manasant Island is yeah. super cool. Yeah. And his story, the story of, of Buddy Pine and, and his like, um, his, his story of, of this sidekick character who's underrated and underappreciated mm-hmm. turned villain. Yeah. It's something we've seen in some comics, but the story being told and focused so heavily on this, it's, it's very cool to see him have no ability, no powers mm-hmm. um, to create this technology yep. that makes himself above all these other supers. Yeah. You killed off real heroes so you could pretend to be one. Yeah. Yeah. And his plot of when everyone's super, no one will be. Mm. And kind of that whole Excellent. idea of if everyone wins all the time and if everyone is great, mm-hmm. if everyone excels and there's no improvement, there's no criticism, there's just stale, flat nothingness. That is when syndrome wins. Yeah. That is when it's over yeah. and and there's no progression in society. It's true. Syndrome is the ultimate villain of, yeah. of, of all society. Yeah. Totally. If, if he succeeds, everything's over. Right. You right. know? <laughs> um, I mean, his threat is so massive. Right. And he got so close to actually accomplishing it. Yes. It was ultimately this hubris that defeated him. But right. So such an awesome movie. I, I just, yeah. I can't get enough of it. I love Dash. I've always loved Dash. Yeah. As a kid, right. I dressed up as Dash when we went to a free comic book day one time. I, right. I had Dash pajamas. Yeah. I would run around the house all the time as oh, yeah. Dash. Definitely. I love him. Yeah. I love Violet even more as I've gotten older. I've grown yes. more, more close yes. to Violet yes. and, and her insecurities right, and her, right, right. her temper and her yeah i love when violet laughs at dash when he runs into her force field oh she yeah, has such an yeah. evil laugh totally just there yeah like you said the mundanity of of just everyday life with superheroes love the dinner scene the dinner scene is brilliant the dinner scene is a major highlight for me because everything that happens at that dinner table is like we've all experienced that yeah in some yeah. level you know <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. so good dash the relationship the between us today yeah. dash in in school yes with just the teacher the tack on oh, the teacher's man. chair the, so good so much of the movie is no superhero stuff so yes. much of it is no costumes right no punching conversations just everyday life bob at work yeah. Love the Bob at work stuff. Love oh, the conversation man. with Speaking Bob and Helen. Visual storytelling with Wally. This movie, the the whole mm-hmm. part where he's 
going through his day. He's stuck in traffic and he's at InsuraCare and all that stuff. It's all very visual, even though there is dialogue. Sure. Rick Dickard. Oh, uh, but lucky the back. Whole, yeah. lucky back. Yeah. yeah. So cool. So, so cool. The, rela- the, the relationship between Bob and Helen is so perfect. It feels so real. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. feels so much like a real couple. And yeah. their, their relationship after he goes out with Frozone and saves the people from the burning Oof. building. That scene is so good. Is this that- rubble? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is just excellent. Everything they say there is, again, just so relatable. Yeah. It connects me so much with those characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just understand them. I totally understand Bob. And where he's coming from. I totally understand Helen and her Mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that with your story, it's just, it's a sign of a great storyteller. Dash was right. The bad guys are threatening mom and dad's (laughs) marriage. Exactly. And that's the most compelling thing about the the threat. They make you care about the relationships even more than the threat to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because the threat to a world is like, it's so big. It's kind of abstract. Mm -hmm. You can't even wrap your head around Mm -hmm. it. So every great, movie i mean star wars indiana jones all of it it's all about not so much of the world ending but these people and their lives and their relationships ending right you know they have to make you care about them Mm -hmm. um, in order for you to care about the larger story and yeah Yeah. brad bird is a master there's always an internal conflict Mm -hmm. there's always an external one superhero movies typically deal with external primarily right and brad bird he he's he's too good of a filmmaker yeah to compromise in anything that he does whenever he makes anything correct so he goes all in he yep. goes all in with he the does. characters they're fully realized mm-hmm. and and this is my favorite pixar film one of my favorite movies I've ever made so that is it for our pixar rankings we hope you enjoyed this video leave your comment below i want to know your entire pixar rankings and make sure you uh give us a like sure you hit the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications And we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Animation is not a genre. You're right. (laughs) We should talk about animation more. Speaking more about Pixar as a company and and the way that they do things, we touched on a little bit. They just kind of have this mentality of quality and and of, of... communication and community and the way that they create their films as an animation studio they understand what makes animation so special and this is something brad bird has said countless times uh, primarily in his uh commentary of incredibles animation is not a genre correct animation is not a genre animation is an art form Right. And through animation, as you've seen through our, our rankings of all these different movies, yeah. they're all different genres. Sure. One of them is sci-fi. One of them is a Western with dinosaur <laughs> Teletubby toys. And one of them is, you know, they're all over the place. Yeah. They're all different kinds of stories. Right. And, and a lot of them are, are children oriented. Mm-hmm. Pixar's, they make movies for kids. Yeah. Right. But there are so many other animated movies that aren't for kids. Just sure. recently, the movie Flea was nominated for Best Documentary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a fully 2D animated documentary, which is crazy that yeah. animation can do documentaries, right. you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And, and every year we get little glimmers of, of other independent animation studios doing their own thing. And it's just a testament to the art yeah. and, and the kind of respect that it deserves and that Pixar is has kind of elevated animation to a new standard, um, which, which I'll be eternally grateful for to Brixar. I just want to see more experimentation, yeah, more more genre jumping stuff, yeah. um, and do new stuff with animation. That's what Pixar does best: is they advance the technology, they advance the stories, they give us new things, and and they expand the horizon of of what animation is, and that is the art of imagination. There's no limits with animation. It goes as far as you can think it and draw it. Mm-hmm. It can be made completely real. Yeah. And the challenge comes with making that story real. Mm. And that's what Pixar does best mm-hmm. is making that imaginative, crazy idea dream yeah. into something tangible, yeah. relatable, likable, right. and emotional. 
Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an impossible feat that can only be done by a team of massively creative creators. Yeah. 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 I totally agree with all that. And yeah, animation, it, it, uh, yeah, it does get looked down on, I think a lot uh, for various reasons. Um, but yeah, it's just another form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the way I think I've always looked at it. I've always grown up watching animation and just have never stopped, yeah. you know, uh, because uh, I just enjoy a unique way to tell a story. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mm -hmm. tell a story through a painting, right? I mean, a painting right. Right. Uh, hanging in a museum tells a story. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can do the same thing with film, with, with animation, well, yeah, whatever, I mean, yeah. you like, know, a, a book, right. you know, just right. the written word right. is a story. Right. So that's, there's that's, all different ways to do it. That's what makes film so incredible. Is yeah. it's the the marriage of all of those art forms. It's music. It's visuals. Exactly. It's it's motion. It's right. it's all of these things coming together. Yeah. And to me, that's what makes animation the purest form of film, mm -hmm. because while film is taking photography right. and making that putting that in motion mm -hmm. and making whatever's real, whatever we can actually capture, right. that's film. Mm -hmm. That's that's live action cinema, and mm -hmm. that's terrific. Yeah. You can do amazing things with that. Yeah. But to me, animation, there's no limit. You can right. make it look real. You can make it look like it's a genuine thing. Or you yeah. can make it look like something you've never seen before. Sure. It's the purest form of, of cinema to me is animation. Mm. The original film was, was an animated moving picture, a drawn image that you flip mm. through a flip book <laughs> and it goes over and over. And right. that's what film is. Right. It's that and music and yeah. dialogue and the story. I don't want to get into like, oh, I prefer animation over live action all the time. Right. But to me, I think animation is that kind of more pure, boundless, uh, imaginative uh, outlet sure. for, for creative storytelling. Yeah, yeah. It combines more of the painting aspect, especially when you're talking about hand-drawn right. animation, it's the, you know, Van Gogh or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. old school painters of the Renaissance, you know, uh, it's taking that kind of um, art form mm -hmm. to the cinematic level, uh, right. which is really, really cool to see. So, yeah, so that's our discussion on Pixar, on animation, and on our Pixar rankings. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Real World. We will see you next time. Bye.